That's how I feel about Married at First Sight for the last seven weeks. Let me tell you something now. I've been sick and tired of that blood clot show. Listen, you've been on seven weeks too long. Seven weeks too long. We're on episode 21. How are we on episode 21? And you still haven't got an answer for me for Shaq and Kirsten. How are we 21 episodes in and I still haven't got a finished D-Day and you're telling me there's three more episodes to break down? Why? I am tired. Lifetime, I know you watch my things. I know you watch our lives. I know you watch our lives. Take this to your blood clot producer. We are tired. Okay? We're tired. Okay? It's been barring, and you could have done this in 14 episodes, not 24. Like, you, you got 24 blood clot episodes. For what? For what? You're not showing me anything new about any of the couples. Clint and Gina have been in a marathon with Kenyans in trying to show us that they don't want to be in a relationship. Why have you done that? Why have you done that? At this point in time, the Kenyans and the Ethiopians, okay, can't outlast Gina and Clint. I don't understand why they're going for a marathon. I don't understand. I, I don't get it. We knew they weren't going to say yes. Okay? It's barring. All right? It's barring. It's barring. It's barring. We are tired. You understand what I'm saying to you? We are tired. Right? You could have done this in 14 episodes, blood clot thing. You get me? Could have been done in 14 episodes and then had two extra episodes for the reunion. But you're telling me there's three more episodes to go? This reunion is not even going to be spicy. There's nothing to be spicy over. The reunion is going to be barring because there's going to be nothing to be spicy over. Listen, we got two couples together, right? We've got two, two, one at this point. And maybe Shaq and Kirsten say yes, right? At best, Nicole and Chris are going to come back and tell us they love each other and it's going to be calm. Who's going to beef, right? Okay, what, Dom and Dom's going to kiss uh, uh, Clint and what? I'm sorry, not Clint. Uh, what, what, uh, what's his name? Um, so, yeah, Clint's going to kiss Dom and it's going to be a thing. It's not going to be enough. There's no, there's no beef there. What, what, Aris is going to see that Jasmine had a conversation with my man uh, at the party. That's it. Uh, you lot are jarring. Whatever you sign as a contract, that's probably why we're having 21 episodes. And I, listen, that's why I stopped reviewing it. I stopped reviewing it for the past four weeks. I said, I'm tired. What can I add? What could I say that is different to what I've seen last week and the week before and the week before that and the week before? What could I add to your or to me, to you guys as an audience? What more could I add? What more could I add? Okay. All right. What more could I add? Y'all are even doing fake. Yeah, they even do now this fake storyline with Clint stealing the dog from Gina. What the? Is that how much contentlessness you got, bruv? Is, is, is that how much contentlessness you got? Do you know what I mean? Like, is, is, that the, is that the amount of content we've got now? We, we're now, we're now trying, to, we're trying to make it less. If the whole season you show me Clint is not a dickhead. Okay, we show me that Clint is not an idiot. We show that you show me that Clint is not a bad guy. Why do you think I'm gonna believe that Clint is gonna steal Hank from Gina? Like, yeah, what? What, what, what? What's that? He's gonna steal. He's gonna steal uh, Hank from Gina. <sighs> Y'all damn well know that ain't gonna happen. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm just like, I'm just like, this is, this is. <clears throat> This is the scraping of the bottom of the pan when you've cooked a nice little jollof rice or some pot of rice and there's a bottom pan, there's a bottom burnt part of the of the rice at the bottom of the pan, okay? Right? And you're literally scraping because you're so hungry, right? You're scraping literally and the bottom of the pan, you know when it you know when it takes the shape of the pan, right? That is what you're carving out of this show. Okay? We are tired. There is no need for this to be a 21 episode. Look, now I was tired with 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 Chris and 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 what's her name? Paige. But at least that was some content. You know, that was that would that was that what we were tired because there was so much drama going on. I'm tired because it's boring and you give me 21 episodes. Okay. 21 blood clot episodes 
seven of them could have been saved. Like, we didn't need to. Like, I, who remembers what happened the last time? I don't know what happens because nothing happened. Right? The same old argument Chris and Nicole are having for the last seven weeks. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying that I don't need it to be, I don't need to be, I don't need toxic, inf I don't need toxic content. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying if you're going to do the next seven episodes, okay? If you're going to do the next seven episodes, right? From the 14th to the 21st, if you're going to do the next seven episodes, give me content with the, the, the experts. Let me see what they're working on. Let me see the growth aspects. Let me see um, them putting them to challenges to make them grow. Let me see those things. No. Instead, you got someone on the cutting room floor in the edit room, okay, editing this bull crap and send it to me, okay? And you want me to mark this essay as an A when this essay is barely a D. In fact, it's looking like an E grade, but you looking at me as if I'm the mad one because you gave me an E grade paper, wanted me to give it an A. Right? You want to give you want me to market an A and give you my time. I didn't even bother watching the last few weeks. I can't lie to you. I didn't bother. I didn't even bother. Okay. I started I started watching F at the beginning of the weeks. I started watching the first five minutes and I just said, I can't be bothered. I got nothing to say. I've said everything I can say for the past few weeks. I can't say it again. Right? So here's what I need lifetime to do. Okay. I need you to stop the bull crap of you trying to experiment with too many of these couples, right? You've experimented enough, it's boring, yeah? Can we get at least two or three couples that are gonna make it, first and foremost? So let's stop with the bullcrap experiment where you're intentionally choosing people, that ain't it, all right? That ain't it, that's not what we want, okay? That's number one, okay? Number two, here's what I want, here's what I want. I want more inclusion with the experts, why have we got experts? You have you have uh, uh, Devon Franklin and I can't remember the other lady's name, right? And they were barely in the season. I had Devon Franklin coming on Instagram talking about he's on Married at First Sight. But you barely there. I'm on Married at First Sight more than you are. And I'm not even there at all, right? I need I need you, if you're going to be having these other experts, I need you to, I need to see them, right? Because the last seven weeks could have been you bringing the experts. Dr. Pia, thank you very much. We could have had you bringing the experts in and working with these couples to see what things they can work on to increase. Why is it you're focused on these couples and nothing is a guan? Nothing's happening. No growth is taking place. What is the point? What is the reason? What is the reason? You cut the episodes down from an hour and a half to an hour, and you still couldn't bring me a proper a proper episode, right? And by the way, shout out to the hour episodes. I'm sick and tired of seeing the hour and a half episodes when you know you can't fill an hour and a half. I need the hour episodes, okay? All right? I need the hour episodes, okay? I need those hour episodes from now on. I don't see a reason why we have an hour and a half, and I need to stop this block clutching that you lot do at the beginning of the season where you give me three or four episodes of the wedding. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Unless you're going to give us a complete breakdown of how I'm going to have my wedding, I don't want to know where you're going to have four episodes of every other couple's wedding. Why? There's nothing going on. You're forcing yourself to suffer. For what? We need an hour. Yeah? Fit it into an hour. In fact, make it 45 minutes. That will make it even more beautiful. Make it 45 minutes, right? Just hit it. Boom, 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 boom. Wedding after wedding after wedding after wedding after wedding. Five couples. Bang, 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 bang. Right? Vowels. Did it, did it. And then that, that, you see, then my attention can be caught. Because I know when I start seeing an hour and a half on the bar, okay? By the way, I don't, don't think so. But when I watch it for, when I see an hour and a half, okay? When I see an hour and a half, two hours at one point, in the, and it was it was later, not this year, but before. And when I see an hour and a half, okay, an hour and a half, okay, on the bar meter, I'm like, oh my god, an hour and a half, and I'm gonna do this four times before you even get anywhere in a couple session. My God, what is the point? What is the reason? What what what? Why do I need this? Right? You're just filling the air. You, you're giving me a packet of crisps with about 20% crisp and 80% air. I'm sick 
and I'm tired of the air in these episodes. So much nitrogen or whatever it is, nitro oxide filled in these particular packets, nothing aguan. Nothing's happening. Okay, so I need you to put these weddings into one episode, an hour long maximum. Okay, hour maximum. Nothing more. Okay, nothing more. All right, so I don't want to see any more than an hour, and a half, an hour on each episode. We don't need 21 episodes unless you've got 21 episodes of actual energy. If not, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I'm sick and I'm tired. And I've been, I've been literally, I've been sleeping. Guys, I've been, I turn on the show and I sleep. And I say to myself, I've got nothing to add to these people because I've got nothing to give you guys that's actually going to be of worth. There's nothing to learn from because they're doing the same thing I've done in the beginning of the season. For what? Stretch Armstrong in the episodes. For what? you got experts that don't do anything. You have an hour and a half episode. OK, you got couples that don't even like each other. And yet we're not seeing. And look, do you know, do you know how, do you know, do you know, do you know what you could have done? No, no, we, we could have, we could have saved the season. Here, what we, here, here, what we could have done, right? You could have given me more expert time with Clint and Gina, right? That's another thing. That's another thing as well. That's another thing. There was no smoke for Gina whatsoever, but this woman was promoting her business left, right and center. Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Are you stupid? What's wrong with you? Why are you allowing Gina the whole entire time to promote her salon business? I don't give a hoots what her business is, right? Did, 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 did one of the producers and the editors suddenly become friends with Gina? Because all I got from Gina was every single time, right into the end of this episode, you know, my 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 salon, you know, he helped, he helped me with my salon. He helped me with my business. All I heard from Gina was business, 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 business. Why the frick did we not get the experts in to be more inclusive with Gina and Clint? I believed in them. No, you didn't because I didn't see you with them. Right. So 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 why am I getting more airtime of her talking about her business than her talking about her actual show? And uh, Sorry, about her actual marriage. Right. Why am I getting that? So 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 you could have saved it by doing that. Right. We could have gone. You, you did. You did a little bit. You dibbled. You dibbled a little bit. You dibbled a little bit. You dibbled a little bit with, with, with Aris. You dibbled a little bit. I need you to go a little bit deeper. OK, I, I needed you to go a little bit deeper with Aris and have more expertise time to work on some of the, let's say, the, the trauma and some of the, 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 the issues that that old boy had. There was a lot to go through for Aris. Aris, Aris needed help. Right. I don't care if it's an experiment and you're doing crazy people. Let's let the experiment be added with the experts as well to be involved. OK. All right. Could have helped Aris have a better uh, understanding of himself. And we could have learned from it. We could have learned from the fact that you're you're helping Aris through some of his problems. Right? Now, he might have never, ever made it with to the end with Jasmine. We weren't concerned about that. We, that brother told her he didn't attracted to her. That's no comeback for that. We know that already. But we could have seen some growth in there. Okay? All right? She, we, should, we could have seen some growth from there. All right. It's boring. All right. You didn't do anything. You didn't add anything. You didn't give anything to the audience to learn from. It's boring. OK. All right. It's boring. We could have had you guys focus on Shaq and Kirsten a bit more and working on some of their issues. He's got intimacy. Issue, um, Kirsten's got intimacy issues. We could have dived deeper into that. What's her what's her what's her what's her relationship with her father? Could have dived into that. We have uh, a Shaq with his own issues. No father figure in sight. We need to help help him as well. How's that affecting his relationship? We didn't get none of that bull crap, blood. We had none of that, you know. Like none of that. And you, and you thought this, you thought this is a good season, and I'm hearing now they're about to add queer people. I'm like, you, you, we haven't even got the straight people straight. I don't understand how we're gonna get the queer people straight. You know what I mean? Like we haven't even got the straight people straight. How are we gonna get the queer people to be straight too? I just don't understand. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm about sick and tired. I need lifetime to choose which side you fall on. Are you here for the banter? Are you here for the vibes? Are you here for the drama and the toxicity? Get Choose one. Choose a side because I felt like you were trying to do everything this season. 
Okay, I feel like you're trying to do everything this season. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, I felt like you you were doing a little bit of dibbling and dabbling, but you weren't really doing anything. You know what I mean? You were doing niche. Doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but doing nothing with it. Huh? Yeah, I, I was told Jasmine, basically what he said is that you don't love yourself, girl. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that was wild for him to say that. Um, but yeah, no. Yeah, it was... It was... Uh, it was, yeah, it was boring, man. Um, you know, I just, I just, yeah. You know, I just, I'm, 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 I'm a bit, I'm about tired of it, bro. You know what I mean? I'm a bit tired of it. Like, I'm not saying again, this goes back to what I said before. I'm not looking necessarily for absolute drama. What I'm looking for is some, some depth to the show. Since you're talking about marriage, if you're talking about marriage, let's talk about some depth. You know what I mean? Like, Let's get some experts on. Let's get these experts to actually be experts. You know what I mean? I'm about sick and tired. We've wasted seven weeks of an hour, seven hours plus more, because an hour and a half plus the adverts for some people. We've wasted absolute time watching the show. So I've given you my 15 minute rant, okay? Because I had to get that out of my chest. Um, you know, to get that off my my spirit, uh, you know, <sighs> yeah, it's uh, it's problematic, you know, it's a definitely a boring season this season, you know. What I mean, I need you to choose one if you if you're gonna sit with the devil, at least give us some of the devilish tendencies, you know. what I mean, like you trying to sit with the devil, trying to behave like an angel, that's how I feel like Lifetime is playing with us. It's like you're gonna sit with the devil and give us devil TV, but not, not give us no devilish stuff. Choose which side you're falling on, bro. Either you're wholesome or, or you're devilish. Choose one side. I just can't, I don't like the middle line you're towing. It's boring. You know what I mean? You're giving a little bit of toxicity and then you go all wholesome. Give me one of the two so I know what I'm coming up to get. You understand? So that I know where to put you, what box to put you in. If I know that I'm coming to watch Man at First Sight, I now know it's a toxic show. I'm going to treat it as, as such. But right now, when I, when I tune in every week, I'm not sure what I'm getting. I'm getting a little bit of toxicity and then I go back to wholesome. And then I, then, and I go a little bit of, and I go, it's like, choose a side, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah, choose a side. Yeah. At this point, I think someone needs to, I think someone needs to take the contract off lifetime. Um, I think we need new people. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's boring. Okay. Uh, it's boring. Okay. And someone said it as well. I saw as well. Uh, decision day. I need them to stop this. You going to speak first. I'm going to speak second. It's nonsense. Okay. It doesn't work. We need you to hold up a, a placard or write down on a on a on a space or whatever, um, you know, write down or whatever, and hold up the placard. Yeah, placard gets held up. We know what you you know what I mean. So that so that you know, I'm not waiting for you to say what you're going to say. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what we want. Okay. Someone said it. We need to, we need options to swap spasa. I think we need the option. Uh, I do think we do that need as well. I think do you know what we need. If you're going to go down this whole route, you know, if you're going to go down this whole route where it's not going to be. It's not going to be a, a, a full-on, a, a, a wholesome marriage show. I need you to be a bit more creative then, okay? Right? I need to be a bit more creative, okay? Here's an idea you can do, right? We can, we can, go, we can, we can do what we call anonymous voting, right? People go into the booth. The couples go into the booth. Everybody gets a vote individually, and they vote for, for who they think should be together, yeah? Who they think should match up. And whoever, whoever gets the most votes, whatever, or whatever, they match them two together. After, after like three or four weeks. Yeah. Because clearly you guys don't care about marriage. So since we don't care about it, let's go all the way. I just feel like you're giving me, you're, you're, you're being a bit of a bee about it. You know what I mean? You're being, you're sitting on the fence. Let's not be a bee about it. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. I feel like you're being a bee about it lifetime. Right. Like you're, you're, you're kind of doing some dickhead moves, but then you're not really being a dickhead. It's like, it's like choose one or the other, be the dickhead or don't be a dickhead. Like it, just don't do, try to do both. Right. So if we're going to be if we're going to be unwholesome, let's be unwholesome. If we're going to be fun. Let's be fun with it. You understand? We're going to be mad. Let's be mad with it. Don't let's not try to, you know, toe that line. It's boring. It, you've done 16 seasons now. We now know what tricks you're coming up with. You know what I mean? So let's spice it up a little bit. Get somebody in there. Let's spice it up a little bit. All right. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's spice it up a little bit. OK, so we can do what the, we can do what Australians do. And where it is the marriage is not set in stone. Um, the marriage is not set in stone. 
Um, so what it is is that you know it's a marriage, but it's not set in stone. So I think the Australian, the Australian one is that they they they're married. They're not necessarily married all the way. Like so, basically, it's not full on marriage, right? And that could be at the end of the eight weeks. At the end of the eight weeks, that could be confirmed and noted that you guys are actually married. And what we can do is in between that time, maybe at a four week mark, we can have you know uh, if there's so you know what I mean saying like you because it, 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 we're not doing marriage anymore, you know. You know, we can we can switch it up a little bit. Um, you know, you know, I, I I think I think that we can do a little bit more where people can actually interact with other people. Um, you know, they can go a little speed date or whatever before. Uh, you know, so on the honeymoon, maybe on the honeymoon, they can do the speed date thing or whatever, a blind speed dating or whatever, you know what I mean? We can do some things where they like, like and I like the idea about love is blind, so they, they can get married. Or not even married, married, but they can meet at the altar, like each other. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Then they go on a honeymoon, and we can do what we call blind date or whatever. And they go into the booth maybe for a few days or whatever. And they can't see each other, but they're talking to other people. And then maybe someone else connects to them. And then from there, they keep from there. Do you know what I mean? Give me content. Give me something, please. Okay? Give me something, right? Give me something to work with because you're not going to be wholesome. And you're not trying to really respect the sanctity of marriage. So since we're not doing that, let's be mad about it. Let's be mad about it. Okay? Let's be mad about it. Let's be mad together. You feel me? Okay? Let's be mad together. But I think that could work. You understand? Yeah? We meet at the altar. You say yes. You go on your honeymoon. Most people, most people are going to say yes because they want to stay on the show. They go on the honeymoon. And as they go on the honeymoon, we can either int we can introduce new people. So they've already seen each other, but we can introduce new people, okay, into the into the into the phase, right? So within the first week or two, right? If you like someone, you know, you like you like your partner, whatever, yeah, you're together. But when you get into when you get to the uh, uh, when you get to the honeymoon, that's when we can introduce some extra people. Now, you understand what I'm saying to you, yeah? We can and we can either do that blindly or we can do that, you know. We can do that. You open your eyes and see. We're on an island now. You know what I'm saying to you? You hear me? Huh? You know, so we can see what happens and people can, you know, see what's happening. Or we can do what we call like a little blind wife swap thing four weeks in. Yeah. I don't care to take my idea. I really don't really care because it at this point, I just want them to do better. You know what I mean? What we could do is the first four weeks, you stay with your partner. At the four week mark, we're swapping couples. You have to swap. Yeah, for at least a week, at least a week or two, you have to swap your couple. You understand? Yeah. So maybe there's like a second person who is uh, uh, a second person who's also uh, 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 compatible with you. You understand? And then you put that person with that other person. You got to do a two week swap. You see what I'm saying to you? Or we introduce new people and they got to stay with that person for two weeks, and maybe we'll see what happens. Because clearly, this is not serious, bro. Y'all don't care about marriage, so I'm at this point saying. I don't care either. Let's do something a little bit crazy. Let's change it because it's boring. Okay? It's boring. It's no longer married at first sight anymore. You, you guys don't care about married at first sight. You put people together that definitely have things in common, but are never going to really make it work in the marriage setting. You know this already. That's why it's called an experiment. You down well know it ain't going to work. So I'm saying let's add some extra variables to the experiment to make it a powerful show. Okay? Yeah, I like that. Queen said, even give them their type. Yeah, we can do that four weeks in, and their actual type that they said that they wanted looks like them comes in. Let's see, they stay. You know, so you know, married at first sight temptation. Okay, so you know, I'm just saying, like, we're tired, man. Tired, man. It's boring, man. It's boring. All right, cool. Uh, let's get into the show because there's a lot to discuss. I mean, there's not a lot to discuss, but there's some things to discuss. I'll put a link in the chat because I know a couple people are obviously here want to jump in and that. But we're back, baby. We're back. I know Temptation Island started as well. So you know, I'm going to start reviewing Temptation Island because I need that drama. Because clearly, man, at first sight, don't know what the fuck they're doing. You know, they're not choosing a side. To rest on, but I want I want to review Temptation Island. Um, I want to see. I want to I want to get back on it because I remember I watched a few seasons back ago. But uh, yeah, 
Uh, that starts, okay, June 14th. We're going to review that then. We're going to be on that. Temptation Island, gonna, we're going to do it together, guys. Temptation Island, um, we're, gonna, we're definitely going to do that this time, you know? Temptation Island is going to be a good one. Uh, Married at First Sight Ultimatum. Yeah, look at, listen, listen. That will be powerful. Yeah. You know? Let's, let's get into that. That'll be good as well, man. <clears throat> so we are definitely going to have a conversation about that. Let's talk a little bit about these couples quickly as well. And then I'm going to put a link in the chat. I know a couple of people want to join as well. So uh, let me put that link in the chat for you guys. But yeah, man, I'm... Uh, man. Hey. Sick and tired of my life first time. Let me uh, put a link in the chat for you guys. Uh, and then <clears throat> we'll get the show uh, popping as well. Whew. Oh, my God. This show. Crazy. All right. <clears throat> Batman in the, in the yard. And I in the yard, my man stuck it in the yard. No, I'm not in the yard. And the kid get it in the yard. And the kid get it in the yard. All right, cool. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Uh, all right, cool. <clears throat> Let's uh, get into this uh, conversation. All right, cool. So let me talk really quickly about these couples because they're, 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 they've been annoying me. So let me get into some of these conversations. I see JR and Crystal behind the scenes. I'm sure Trey will join in a second as well. Uh, but let me quickly just go to this. Uh, Chris and Nicole, they said yes. Chris and Nicole, shout out to them. They said yes. Um, they're the only real couple that were on the season, if I'm honest with you. Um, I think it was good to, to see them two finally say yes on decision day i i love their body language um you know they they actually they actually one of the few that for you they're probably the only ones who actually turn to face each other i don't know if you noticed that um they turned and face each other hands in hand that was really good positive uh uh body language that you know what this is gonna be a good uh answer and um i know they've got their flaws i know nicole can be a little bit annoying with her insecurity but i really do love the fact she is supportive and caring and i think chris will benefit from having her in his life i know he might be a little bit annoyed by some of the insecurity but he'll get over it uh because you know he himself his inability to to act in the moments where he was frozen he can't chat for nothing so he needs to enjoy nicole and some of her flaws because he got his own okay all right when dogs were about to get sent out of here old boy froze up okay that woman was my, moving like superwoman we ain't never forget okay so we love uh we we love to see them two together hopefully they can make it she does need to work on that insecurity because it is a it is it is it can it can be a little bit annoying it can be a little bit annoying but um i love to see them together um as well and hopefully nicole will stop trying to give everybody else advice and focus on her blood clot marriage and nobody else's you understand um cool let's talk about aris and jasmine listen aris is a whole fool i i like aris but he's a whole fool but, you know, I understand what he was trying to say. Basically, basically what's happened is Aris is this, right? Aris is the kind of person that he, if, if they didn't have the divorce, he would stay with Jasmine forever. Okay. All right. Because it, it, it's comfortable, right? He would stay with Jasmine and be comfortable, probably end up cheating in the course of a relationship, but it'd be comfortable him staying with, with Jasmine, right? He was comfortable by the end. Number two, I think with uh, Aris and Jasmine, I think Aris, whilst not trying to be confrontational, wanted to tell her something, which is, I need you to have the bee in you, okay? All right, and you told me at the end that Jasmine, you got a bit of the bitch in you, but he's like, I need to see a bit more of that bitch in you, okay? Um, and Jasmine be talking, but not giving us none of that, okay? She be saying that she gonna give it, but we never see it, okay? So Aris really wanted to see her have a little bit more of the bitch in him. Let's be honest, okay? Yeah, he wanted to, he wanted to see more of the of the of the uh, uh, of that energy from her okay now i was a little bit concerned by the comment when he said obviously you know i want to uh, you know uh stronger whatever harder faster whatever put my leg up i was like bro you talking about yourself or you talking about the girl because it sounds a little bit like you want to take it from yourself and I, at that point i was a little bit shook okay but i don't think he's gay i just think he meant but the woman was saying that to him and that's what he began i think he wanted a bit more of that push pill push pull effect from jasmine 
I think his non-confrontational ways, he ends up with women that are a bit more confrontational. I think it pulls him out of his natural comfort zone. I think Jasmine being the same as him, he rejected who uh, he rejected the same energy that he was receiving from her. Um, and uh, it wasn't attractive to him. Um, but, you know, she looked beautiful. Um, you know, he did challenge her on... Uh, he did challenge her on... Uh, he did challenge her on her, her being... Uh, self love because he said obviously he hugs himself. I'm like, I was like, Negro, you don't even know your own pitfalls of your, your own trauma you're carrying that makes it in the makes it uh, um, makes you unable to actually uh fully give your whole heart, you know, to, to the woman that you're in a relationship with. So, bro, before you start talking about because you hug yourself, that's how you love yourself, sir. Better check yourself before you wreck yourself. You need to know that listen, you got trauma, bro. I'm not saying you can't, I'm not saying that you can't, two things can't be true, but I was like, you, you coming on a high horse and I'm like, you don't even see your own pitfalls. You struggling to be a, in a relationship. You struggle to be in one long-term and you talking like you are one of these people on a high horse. You going to get dashed off that high horse real quick. So I need you to calm the freight down. Okay. You need, you, I need you to calm the freight down. All right. I need to chill. Okay. All right. Cause that, that ain't it at all. That, that ain't it. Okay. That weren't it, that won't be it, then that ain't it, okay? All right, so that wasn't for me. Um, I was like, you know, he tells himself that he's beautiful and loves himself. I was like, that's great. Uh, did you tell yourself to, to, to learn how to maneuver in a relationship? Did you tell yourself how to be better in a relationship? Because that's what I need to see from you, okay? You didn't give 100% and you barely tried. And I know because you don't find her attractive, but the reality is you could have done a better job. Clint showed you up by showing us how you can turn up by not uh, how you can turn up, even though you've been turned down. You feel what I'm saying to you, right? And Aris didn't give us that. Okay, so I don't want you trying to come out here on your high horse like you better than everybody, better than Jasmine. When, in all honesty, sir, no. Uh, but I do take into account what he said. He wanted, he liked the fact that Jasmine did stand up for herself and was a bit more uh, assertive. Um, and so we do appreciate that aspect of him as well. Okay, um, so that was also happening. Uh, then uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about uh, Gina and Clint because Gina is a whole damn problem, okay? And what really pissed me off, okay, what got uh, what got my knickers in a twist? I don't even have knickers. That's how twisted I am. What got my knickers in a twist was the fact that not one expert held Gina accountable. Not one, okay? And we've been here before. Just saying, okay? We've been here before, all right? With the Haley thing, we've been here before where they don't hold uh, a, 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 a Karen accountable, okay? All right? They, they don't hold a certain Caucasoid accountable. And I need her to be held accountable for her absolute trash behavior throughout the season. How can your dog like your husband more and you want to go on like you're, you're the better partner? Look, even to even in the conversation with the experts, she was still trying to throw a little bit of a shot. She was like, "Oh, you know what? Um, you know what? You could have worked on. You could have worked on actually, even though you didn't get any, even though you know uh, it didn't seem like it. You could have tried to come after. You could have tried to come up, try to come after you. Are you dumb? Are you all right? Are you stupid? Are you okay? Are you nuts? Are you cracked cocaine? Are you all right? You've lost the plot. Are you snorting that white stuff again? Because clearly you're off your rocker, right? You want me." To come and chase you when I've been cooking, I've been cleaning, I've been loving your dog. I tried to talk to you and you want me to do what more? I come to your salon. What more do you want from me? You have had a problem with me. And every single time you keep mentioning your blood clot weight and we don't care about it anymore. It was mentioned once about your 26 inch waist, once mentioned about being athletic. And that was it. Sis took it from there and ran a 400 meter and said, I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to run 800 today. And said, I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to do a 1500. And said, I ain't going to stop there. I'm going to do a 3000 K, uh, 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 a 3000 meter run. Like sis, you just kept on running around the track and a track on a track on a track on a track again. And I'm just like, why are you? We're still mentioning this, 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 this athletic body, baby. You want to let it go? How many times do you want Clint to apologize? Like, let it go. Okay. Elsa could sing the song and you still be going. Okay, Elsa could be singing and you still want to hold on to this athletic body comment when you call somebody a ginger and he stopped, he didn't mention a ginger thing anymore. What is the problem? Come on, sis. 
God damn. Trying to make it as if he's an issue in this whole situation. No, no, this is you the problem. You the problem, Gina. Gina. Excuse my ears. You know what I mean? Like, Gina, I need you to fix up. You know what I'm saying? Right? And not one expert held her accountable. Not one expert. Hearing what this woman was saying throughout the whole season, not one person held her accountable. Nobody even noticed that her dog decided to even wanted to love uh, uh, Hank more than he loved her. No, no one, no one noticed that. Oh, so we just noticed that. You know, you you didn't notice the fact that her own dog wants to transfer to another owner. Do you know how wild that is? That her own dog wants the husband. That should kind of tell you what kind of owner she is, and what kind of person Hank it, uh, what person Clint is. And not one expert held her accountable. So she's going to do this again because nobody told her her behavior was off. Okay? She's going to do it again. Okay? She's going to do it again because no one's holding her accountable. Okay? That that dog, Hank, loves Clint. All right? All right, so Gina's got Gina's Gina. She was said, Gina, get to get to stepping, Gina, get to stepping, Gina. <laughs> oh, I need to watch Martin reruns. Um, yeah, so for me, I was I was I was annoyed about Gina and Clint's situation. I was like, nobody held her accountable. She was just doing nut stuff and you know just talking reckless. I just thought to myself, like, someone needs to hold her accountable. Like, you, he's not the problem. You are. You need to hold yourself accountable. Like, you are the problem, sis. Okay, all right, all right, you are the problem. And uh, and did you notice? Did you notice even at the end, what did what did Clint do? Held himself accountable. Did Gina? Did anybody hear what Gina could have done better? Did you notice that Clint was the only one that said what he could have done better? Did you hear Gina say did you hear Gina say what she could do better? Not one thing did you hear out of Gina's mouth what she could have done better. Not one thing came out of her mouth to say, hey, you know what? I could have done something better, you know. Um, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I could have, I could have worked on this. Not one thing, and not one expert picked up on it and said, "Do you know what? We need to hold her accountable because she's moving mad." Gina's got deeper issues, and honestly, I believe that Gina's got deeper issues. I think Gina's got deeper issues, and when we mentioned this a few weeks ago, about seven weeks ago, I mentioned it because <laughs> that's how long it's been since I watched it. That Gina doesn't like me. I don't y'all don't want to be she don't like men. Okay, whatever her daddy did to her, it pissed her off, and she don't like men. She don't like men. Not that she's gay, but she don't like men, you know. Okay. Don't like men, you know. Okay. So I need her to go and heal. I don't think she's gay, but I definitely feel she don't like man. She needs going, she needs to go and heal. Okay. All right, so I needed to go and do the, that work, okay? All right. All right, so just saying, all right? That's the end of Gina and Clint. And then obviously the fourth couple, okay? All right, Shaq and, and, and Kirsten. Now, let me just say this. At the beginning of the season, I was hard on Kirsten. I really was. I was on Kirsten's neck. And I'm going to say this. Uh, at the very beginning, um, I believe that she has turned the leaf at the end of the show. I do believe that. There's some turning of a show. I do, I do believe there's some. There has been some turning of the leaf a little bit of her side, right? My my thing is, you know, I'm gonna say this to anybody out here. Sometimes you have to just shut up, yeah. Sometimes when you feel something, don't say it, yeah. Cause see now, see now how you told someone you don't find them attractive. Now you got to come back on yourself. Don't say it, yeah. Don't say it, okay? Cause cause now, oh, listen, Shaq has never forgotten that boy. Has never forgotten that he that she called him. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's never forgotten. All right? At every time, have you noticed that ever whenever Kirsten says something nice about where they're going or da -da, he will always dampen the mood by saying, Well, you know, I felt lonely. I felt alone, you know, you didn't check up on me. Right? He did the exact same thing. Okay, he did the exact same thing the last time they met the experts. As soon as it got to a point, he started shitting on it on the situation again. And I, I mentioned it in my other review about it. I said he keeps doing it, right? And it's like, if every time we talk, 
we're getting to a positive place. He keeps on bringing it back down again. I said, that's going to get boring real quick. It's going to get boring real quick. Now, I, I, you know, that's my thing uh, about shacking that incense. But again, I do understand when someone tells you at the very beginning, they don't feel you, it's going to be hard to recover no matter what. Because this girl was on his neck. Talking about how he laughs and this and that. I ain't forgotten. You know what I mean? I'll be honest with you. Me personally, I wouldn't have forgotten. Okay. So uh, it would have been hard for her to come back because I would have been like, I ain't forgotten what you said. I can't trust you. You were cussing me for my laugh. You were cussing me for the fact you thought I had a bald head. You didn't find me attractive. Like, I'm being honest, be honest with you. I don't know how I would come back. Right. Similar to Aris and Jasmine. It, th there's no comeback. Like, once you tell me I'm butters to you, I'm clapped to you, I'm ugly to you, I'm facially challenged to you. Once you tell me that to my face, I'm going to be honest with you, there ain't much of a comeback. Okay? All right? Now, I'm going to leave here with something. And that's for sure. I'm, I'm going to get them panties off. I ain't going to lie to you, but I, I, I can't trust you. Okay? I'm going to treat you like they treat people in, 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 in Power Book 2. Okay? All right? I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm gonna use you and throw your side, baby, because I can't trust you. You know what I mean? Loyalty's at a premium right now. You get me? Yeah. So for me personally, and that, yeah, it's not the team. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now, uh, as for uh, 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 Kirsten, I did see a change. I, I felt like I did see a change. You know, uh, I did see a change. Robin said, "Shame on me." <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> if you think you're going to call me ugly to my face and think I'm not going to play you, you must be freaking mad. Don't do it. <laughs> Shame on you <laughs> for taking me for a dickhead. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> um, but, uh, 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 you know, um, but no, um, I did see a change from, from Kirsten, I believe. I, I felt like I saw a change and, um, you know, I, I, I saw her open up. Um, you know, I think she's a hard person to, she like, you know, she's a hard cookie, you know, but again, like I said, I'm not jumping walls. Um, I'm not doing it. So I refuse to, um, I refuse to, to jump over the walls. You know what I mean? Um, I just don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it. And, you know, I think this showed me this as well. Um, but yeah, no, with Kirsten, I think, she did open up towards the end and she was showing a bit more a care and affection. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the damage has been done. So I guess I'm leaving. Oh, the damage is done. So I guess I'll be leaving. You don't have to say what you did. Cause I already know. I found out from, <laughs> you get me so <laughs> there isn't going to be much of a comeback in that instance i better check on my chicken because it's in the oven um but yeah no um you know so for me personally uh i i, I think between the two of them uh you know i think that that i think he will say no i think he felt like there were some things that she just doesn't do i think she's not a naturally care she's not a naturally intuitively caring person um and i think caring in terms of like not that she won't care at all but she's not intuitive in terms of her servitude uh, you know what i mean what i mean by that is you know some people um before you've almost even said it they kind of are on it you know what i mean like oh if you're carrying shopping they immediately know let me carry the shopping you know what i mean like i think that aspect of her is not necessarily there for Sha for shack anyway um so I, I definitely feel like he need, and he definitely needs more care. And I think she's going to struggle with that. You know, she wants a man. She wants a man's man. Um, and let me not say that again. She wants a man that is less metro, more hetero. And that's no offense to, to, to Shaq. She wants him less emotional, more stoic, um, uh, uh, you know, as well. So I think him not being him being a more emotional person, which you mentioned today, it's made it very difficult for her to, to, to come into space and what he mentioned was very important he's tried to lead before and she wouldn't allow him to so that's a big thing let's talk about you know that's that's a real thing so um yeah uh, it, so that's a tough thing as well so yeah no um you know i i think um these these couples were interesting so let me get a few people on as well get the conversation flowing um and get us talking about some of the 
craziness of this episode as well because it was crazy blood yeah man all right cool yes folks sorry my headphones just dropped i have to grab that uh gone somewhere don't have to grab it after um but yeah welcome guys uh good to to see you guys trey crystal jr good to to see y'all uh we're back at it again i guess we've got another three episodes to go apparently um yeah so it's a mad okay so let's talk about it let's talk about it we're gonna start with uh a bang Let's start with uh, Gina and Clint. I want to get you guys' thoughts on the Gina and the Clint, baby. Uh, Gina and the Clint. Um, what's you guys' thoughts? D-Day, they decided to say, no, 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 no. Um, but I want to get you guys' thoughts on that as well. Uh, yes, JR. Ooh, Good evening, people. Yeah, Gina cool. Clint, go for it. Uh, yeah, Gina and Clint, uh, not surprised at all. Uh, you know, I knew Gina was definitely going to say no, and Clint rightly said no. Um, Gina even mentioned her salon. <laughs> she even managed to get in a quick plug today, like on, on the episode, right? Um, I think also, after she made her decision, she actually again kind of tried to throw a shade clint's way you know talk about you know something that he wasn't doing he needed to make more initiative if he had made if he had made more of initiative and made a move on her you know that's kind of what she was expecting despite her not feeling him so i call cap on that she definitely wasn't interested and you know what what was he being shown from her to um give him the forwards you know she wasn't doing that at all so he did the right thing he stayed quite composed the whole way through despite their disputes and stuff um and yeah i think the the most growth most connection clint had was with hank all right that was that was the only growth in that in that whole dynamic there. Um, so yeah, I call Cap on, on Gina for that. You don't have to say what you did. I already know. Oh, the damage is done. So I guess I'll be leaving. Listen, I agree with Kojo and uh, this, she don't like God. She don't like men, but I don't think she's gay. I just think that there are some women that whatever they've been through in life or you get to a certain point and whatever your history is, is part of your now. And that's, I think that that's where she's at. Um, secondly, she's wrong for, uh, uh, what was it at their little, their last little hurrah with the, with the, with the therapist or with the, with the Cal, with the Dr. Cal and what's her name. And, uh, she was like, well, I just think he's a little crass and I just think he's this and I just think he's that. I'm like, I swear, you didn't you didn't tell him any of this in the last six weeks? Um, I just thought that was wrong that she, she pulled that. It didn't surprise me about her because you could tell on the little, the trip, the look on her face when he was like the sexual innuendo she didn't like. But I was like, this is one time out of what, six weeks that he's done that. And I think that she was just trying to pick something else that she didn't like about him. So you, you are weird. I mean, you are strange. Don't act imperious like you were just this holier than thou and you're this type of woman and you're Miss Prissy and you want a man that's just like this type of guy and he's, he, you are strange. And so I'm like, so he's just supposed to take that? I just thought she's just so... Like she wanted to find something to browbeat him about. So, I mean, this is where she is, you know? And I totally agree with Kojo. I was waiting for her to come back to him 
she said that what she didn't like about him and what she, you know, what she wanted, he didn't give her. And he said, okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. And, oh, she said, I wish he would have done this. I wish he would have tried harder. I wish he would have went for it. I wish he would have done this. I wish he would have done that. He said, okay, I'll take that. And she's like, and, um, and she said, I, I, I accept your apology or something like that. And I said, um, sweetheart, where's yours? Where's your reciprocity in this? And it was nothing. It, she did not reciprocate any type of accountability this whole six weeks or eight weeks. I was like, girl, so you're just going to let this man apologize and let this man fall on the sword and you're not going to say anything? You gave him nothing. So, um, yeah, Gina, I'm just like, be happy in your own pissed off world. Because, um, yeah, you gave him nothing. Uh, that's it for now. This one pissed me off. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm done. I'm trying to bring myself back. I'm trying to. Mm. I, I'm I'm usually a very calm, even keel guy. I'm very logical. I have controlled emotions, maybe too controlled at times. But when I actually heard her talk, it triggered me. I went, "What this bitch? What?" I couldn't believe. I was like, "No, she this this ah uh, this woman had the nerve, the nerve to say to the experts when the experts asked her, well." Is there anything that could have been done that could have changed this? Well, um, well, her lips. Well, um, I just feel like, I just feel like, you know, if he would have just initiated and touched me more, and I was like, what? <laughs> Here you go. I saw Clint's face. I was watching it when this happened. I saw Clint's face. Clint went. <laughs> he went what? For real? What? That they cut the Dr. Pepper. Even her face went. Hmm? Pass the cow, you went. Hmm. Now I was thinking, I was like, all right, this is this is the time where the experts cut in and say something to her. This is it. This is it right here. Go, go. They said nothing. They literally sit here this whole season and let this woman assassinate this man's character. And let's keep it real. There was, there was one point in that conversation, Dr. Pepper was, I blame her, because she brought it up. She was skirting around the issue of what actually happened to them. Because it started all the way back to the beginning. She was skirting around the issue. She's like, you know, un we understand certain things happen and you know what led to this i'm like this is your time to talk about it let's keep it real here let's just let's keep it all the way funky they were well at least on clint's part he was okay with her he was fine he was feeling it in jamaica he's like i kind of like the chick cool yeah let's just do this the moment she said well you know i just never been into gingers with people with ginger features you know it, it's just not been it just hasn't been my vibe it's not my type it was over from that point for clint i'll be honest with you yes i understand what he said next was the next day it was bad it was out of contact it, i get it but let's let's keep it real i was mm, it's the wrong thing to say i know but i was here for petty clint because that was wrong what she said it was wrong it was disrespectful. Like what? I'm ginger. I have ginger features. What you trying to call me? What are you saying? And they said nothing about this. They never, they got on clip for what he said in front of the ladies and her, got her all upset. And Clint apologized, showed constriction. Like, yeah, you know what? I was wrong for saying that but they never touched why it started in the first place. Yep. This woman called him odd, called him all kinds of, well, you are crass, and I just don't like the way, the, what, uh, the way you talk and you do. And I'm like, but he's not strange. Like he's a, he he's a, likes to have a good time. 
And I said, and I was like, he only got drunk at his birthday, unless he got drunk more than we saw, because they could have cut some things out. But I said, but he got drunk on his birthday. Why is this a bad? Why are you making him out to be this, um, this horrible crass person? Because you know she's picking something to try to um, go ahead. We all know what it is. Let's just keep it real. She's jealous of Clint. She's jealous of him. Everyone oh literally, if you think about it, everyone literally likes Clint out of those two as a couple. They only speak good things about Clint. Clint is the life of the party. They actually go to Clint to talk to because he actually does give good advice to people. Very even killed advice. But he's also the life of the party. They don't come to Gina for that. No one does. Like, outside of the scenes that they were forced to, you know, film with her or whatever, do you really see them flock to Gina? They flock to Nicole, from, you know, her nose is behind. But you don't see them go to Gina. But I also think that she may not even be a people person. Like, she can deal with her employees or people, you know, as far as the hair salon, but the other other people, I don't know that she can relate to other people or other women. I don't know that. I I just have not seen that. She, she talks like she's chewing her face. I think that, um, you know, Clint had plenty of things to combat her with, but he didn't, and he was very respectful. And he was also, you know, trying to um, navigate this whole situation. It was very hard, and I thought he did a good job. Like I, there was just so many times and I said, you were literally just picking at this man and, and she's never given him any reason to feel like he could just like take initiative. I mean, does, I, I'm being petty. I'm being petty right now. I know this, but does she really get along with her employees? Cause they seem like they keep quitting, doing their own business, don't show up to work. I'm like, eh. I mean, I've been paying attention, even though it's yeah. I give, I give, I give y'all. There's been some boring moments, but I pay attention. The shows when I watch it, and I've been hearing some of the stuff she might say about her employees. This one do this. This one say that. One's quitting this week. This one don't show up. I'm like, uh, you, you running a business? I don't. I, I don't know. It don't seem like a tight ship to me. Yeah, and I agree with Kojo that this that part where she's called Clint out. Um, in front of the, in front of Dr. Cal and um, Dr. Pepper, that was the only time that they, that their, their that couple gave us anything. It was nothing. This. The dog likes her more than the dog likes Clint. Absolutely. Her. It's a fact. That it's was actually funny. Did you guys? How much did Clint offer to, for the dog? Ten racks. Ten thousand dollars. What? Really? Ten rats for the dog, and she said, "No, girl, put your butt another dog." It. She's taking it. She's stupid. You see, that's how I know she can't run the business. I, was like, I would have gone straight to the business you and given her more, more money for it. You can go buy another dog for cheaper than that. What you talking about? Damn. She Take absolutely can. Thing that a whole dog for two grand. Check this out. She should. She could have uh, got the ten rats. Tell Hank, hey, I still tell Clint, hey, I still want to be his life and just like there. Okay, yeah. fine. Clint the type of person. Yeah, of course. You know, Honestly, we live, live they're the best of friends. Blah, blah, blah. What? While Clint is doing whatever he does, he does a boating, he's a what do you call it? A sailing sailor. and everything. He's a sailor, right? When Clint's on his sail or does his um competitive sailing, she can take she can take um Hank. Like, girl, get your money. What, see, that again. Exactly. That's why you know she's not smart, because she could have taken the money and she could have also reduced her own living expenses because she doesn't have to pay for the dog 24-7. Don't have yep. to buy dog food as much. Don't have to worry about it. Have a dog sitter or a dog walker. She doesn't have to do any of that stuff. Clint would, would do all of that, right? But she not, she's not smart. But um, I'm going to say something bad. Yeah. She's not that smart. She's not that smart. No, nah, she's not. She's not business savvy at all. But Jasmine would have did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, Jasmine's also Jasmine a leader. Means dogs anyway. Oh but my gosh. Rocks. Are you what, what I would say is, like, Clint's birthday was well into the show, well into the yes. season. Yes. Right. So she wasn't feeling him well before he drank at his own party. 
Right. So there, I agree. There is an element of envy when she sees the personality that Clint has attracts so much attention in the room. People, um, you know, laugh and joke with him, and he likes to. I wouldn't even say be the life and soul of the party. He's just naturally him, and he people just, just gravitate towards, towards him, right? So I think there's there's a certain element of he takes away her shine, right? Yeah. Like mm. She thinks she's she's worthy of all the attention when she steps in the room. Well, Clint, uh, I think, you know, if he did have a drink at his birthday, there's nothing wrong with that. But I wouldn't blame him if he was drinking as well because she was taking shots at him all the time. So, like, you know, if he was <laughs> having a, a, a beer every night to relax and wind down, I would have knocked him for the Ivor. Because she was she was really picking at him a lot, right? Got him and he hair. and let's be real, he's not a bum. He's not gonna get drunk and not turn up for work the next day. He's very accomplished in what he does, right? So I think she she was just overly hard on him. She didn't allow him to lighten up. And the other thing I'll add is we we say sometimes, you know, like if if someone you're attracted to says something compared to when someone you're not attracted to says or does something, right? There's com two completely different reactions. Sure. If Clint had have been more forward and tried to instigate any type of physical or sexual anything with her, because she's already off him, she's, she's already repulsed by him, trust me, she would have made that a huge issue. Like, he would have got PC'd, like, cancelled um, for, for making unwanted advances. So I'm glad he avoided that trap too. A very smart guy in that respect. He didn't do anything to make the situation worse. It was purely down to her own perception of him, why she felt the way she did. I don't think he did anything per se that was outlandish. I think she was clutching at straws, trying to, you know, come up with more and more things. And then also there's the element of Mac in the DMs with her. Now, I definitely think Mac made a play for her now that he's Way off the show who doesn't have anything to lose Way let's cover this a little bit exactly so when when, when she realized that max attracted to her and she probably finds him more attractive than clint you know clint can't do anything about being ginger he's got ginger hair all over there's nothing you can do so uh mac being a free agent now i i, I also took note at the end it was nicole that kind of instigated oh so why you know would you go on a date why don't you you and you and gina go on a date mac that right? was set up that was set up yeah but she's trying to match make them so soon knowing that they were coupled with other people so yeah i think there's more to that mac story i, I don't think it was purely him just checking in to see how she was doing now i think more it was more like he was making a play for her and basically saying listen you're probably not going to say no on this uh say yes on decision day if that's the case why don't we hook up right i mean but let's cover this a little bit what did max say that oh well there's this mutual friend of ours that's kind of a celebrity she's a singer and you know i know i didn't have enough chance but i slid into gina's dms to see if you know i could get um a, a get him in get a, a meeting i was like oh please and then he said, "Well, I knew I didn't have a chance with her. That's because you did. You weren't talking. You weren't trying to meet with that girl. You wanted to slip into D Gina's DMs." Exactly. Um, and then it also at the end, we do see that Clint is rolling with another another lady now. They're playing games, doing some adventure stuff. That's get bad. Yeah. Right. But at bad. the end of the day, he ain't wasting no time because I think we all came to the conclusion that Clint. We don't think Clint's going to struggle to find another relationship. Oh you know? yeah, and he even said that in the beginning. It's never been. It's not. It's not hard for me to date. It's not hard for me to have sex. It's not hard for me to meet somebody. I just wanted to get that commitment. I just wanted to see, you know, the other side of it. You know, the funny thing is, you know, the reason why this situation is kind of overall just sour and sad. I remember specifically in the beginning. Like I, I know we talk about how maths do these bad parents, and they do. But there are times when just keep when they do listen to these people when they say they want certain things. Gina did say in those first few episodes. Uh, that's why I always watch the first two or three. To me, it's important. You actually learn about the person, and I judge that to how they act and what they say about themselves. 
Gina specifically said she, she acknowledged that she was a workaholic for a number of years and she worked too much. Now she was at a, a, a point in her life where she wanted to have some adventures, branch out, experience things. So they particularly matched her with a man who literally goes on adventures to pull and pull it out out of her and give her that. Look what the excuse me, I was about to say something. Look what she did with it. She abused it. That just tells me you didn't deserve it in the first place. And you touched on a valid, a very valid point. With her throwing herself into work as much as she says she has, she runs her own business. Her work is her life, right? So obviously, the ability to have a relationship is going to be very hard for her to adapt to no matter if it's a marriage or any dating situation, because she talks about work a lot. She works a lot, you know, outside of work, she probably doesn't have time to do much else. So cultivating a relationship, which will take time to do, like she doesn't, you know, she's not programmed for that right now. And, you know, um, Mac, if he does, um, if anything does develop between them, it may end for the same reason. She may be more attracted to him, but she may be too um, adapted to her work life and her personality will reflect that, which may not make an enjoyable experience for, for them, for, for Mac to be dating her. But it's very, very sneaky what Matt did, um, you know, because she was still on the process. She was still in the show and he's there going to Aris. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I slid into her DM. Like, you, listen, Aris was, Aris was right to, you know, be like, mm -hmm. oh no, I don't want to get involved in none of this. I'm Aris staying out. Aris, Aris ain't stupid. He, he didn't been down this road before. He know where this go. Nah, I ain't getting in the middle of this. I, mm -hmm. You notice he didn't tell Jazz music. I bet he didn't. Because she would have went back and blabbed that. It's like, nope, I, I ain't, I'm out. I ain't doing nothing. I ain't in this. My name Benny. And, and we would have had a blow up like when, uh, who was it? Alexis. Mm -hmm. uh, on the last season when she went back and told I can't remember mm -hmm. who it was but she, she was spreading uh, gossip right I think it was Miguel's was it Miguel's wife nah nah it, it was Tybo girl what was oh yes yeah 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 Tybo girl, girl. Yep, 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 yep. Hey, hey I don't know her name y'all yeah. know what I'm talking about though Tybo girl. yeah crazy crazy Tybo <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Is an old girl I think her isn't her name Nicole too something like that I don't remember yeah but is, you, Morgan Morgan. Morgan. Yeah, Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. Morgan. But you Craig do have a Morgan, point. She yeah. did say that when she first um, filled out her application that she wanted somebody that's more fun and everything. But, and I remember when she was leaving with, um, you know, what did she say to Dr. Pepper and, and Cal that, you know, I wish he would have made these suggestions. If he would have said, you know, let's go whitewater rafting. Why, why didn't he just make those suggestions? Why didn't he go just go for it? You never gave this man the impression that you were interested past just friendships, past just eating together. So he kind of adapted to her personality and he kind of went inside himself. I feel like, what's his name? Um, uh, Clint just kind of lost himself in it. He was just like, I'm just going to ride this out until the end and that's it. But oh, he didn't make this suggestion. He didn't make that suggestion. Girl, please, just please. Mm. 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 I definitely hear what you guys are saying. Still, I hear what you guys are saying. I mean, just just to, just to, to uh, finish the cap of what you guys said as well. Like, I definitely think Gina should have given uh, the dog over. Ten k is not a small amount of money. She could use that to rebuild a business. She could have said, "You know what? You can't have Hank, but I'll give you some puppies of Hank." You know, so, you know, or maybe I can take the puppies of Hank. Let me breed them up. You can get Hank after. You know what I mean? Would have been a smart business deal. Uh, but uh, hey ho, it is what it is. All right, let's talk uh, uh, about another uh, a couple as well. Uh, Chris and Nicole, let's break them down really quickly as well because, uh, you know, I don't think there's much to say about them. We know about them already. But Nicole was on edge. I mean, up until the wedding day, she was on edge. She wasn't sure if he was going to say yes. Like, you you know, it felt some type of way. You know, it felt some type of way. She felt some way. And, you know, and yeah. Oh, he don't froze up on us. Uh oh, we got a frozen. He's frozen. I'll be quick. 
I'll be I'll be quick. Um, Nicole is neurotic, and I'm wondering if she's on some type of anti-anxiety. Oh, are you back? Okay. Okay. Um, Nicole is neurotic. I wonder if she's on some type of anti-anxiety medicine. Um, she's got this low self-esteem is going, is really walks in five feet in front of her and she needs to just relax. And you have to be confident at some point you have to, you know, just, you know, be happy with yourself and not, not, oh, well, what if this, what if that, and he's going to leave me in a year or stuff like that. You've got to stop. And that can ruin the relation that can all of her second guessing herself that can really frustrate him to the point you know what then you know, um it's what is that get out of your own way <laughs> just, just stop you you're really you you putting yourself down is really hurting the relationship um i do think that he needs to take a little bit more initiative and but he also wants her to just calm down sometimes because and i think that to the point, I almost think that he does it on purpose because she's so like high anxiety and stuff like that. I just think, let's just relax. Let's just worry about it later. But it's not sounding like that to her. So he's got to make the specific points. He's got to work in specificity and that'll help her, you know, calm down a little bit. But she's just, she's just high anxiety and she needs, and just low self-esteem. And that's not going to, that's not going to work itself out overnight. She needs therapy. That's all I got for them. And I knew that they were going to say yes. They're the only ones that need to say yes this whole this whole season. That's it. And I knew they were going to say yes. I, I called that one because, you know, they're the only couple that kind of hit the ground running and formed a natural connection throughout, right? Um, I definitely agree with you, Crystal, because, you know, she has high anxiety and she overthinks. and she not only does she overthink about what could happen with their relationship, but she also overthinks how she is as well, right? And he has to be the counterbalance to that. So that's also why I think they match. Because if he began to get all neurotic and frazzled every time she goes off, then it's going to be a turbulent relationship. So he has to, it like the relationship kind of suits. The right. fact that he doesn't have to change that about him. He's Two kind fires of, aren't going to light eat um exactly. It'd be like fireworks, yeah. like firecrackers right. going off. Like so he has to be stoic, but also very reserved, so that it counters how off the wall she can get. Cause she bounces around like a ping pong ball in her mind, right? And um, but saying that, um, I like what I like what they said about each other, right? Um, he finally said that he loves her. And, you know, to her, that meant a lot because that's what she's been trying to get him to say from very early on in the in the season. And for him to naturally say it and, you know, mean it, and they didn't have a contentious or petty relationship. I did think that the um, Dr. Cow sorry, Pastor Cow and, and the doctor, I think they did say something that was sensible, which was that um, both of them, they seem to have the natural chemistry, but because they haven't had that big bust up yet, or they haven't had much arguments, when the cameras stop rolling and they have their first argument, is it going to be something that is major because it, you know, they haven't experienced it before. So will they then question their relationship together? I thought that was a very valid point, but um, yeah, uh, like I said, wasn't surprised at this one at all. Um, and, you know, there has to be, you know, there has to be one solid couple and, and that was them. Um, interesting enough, I knew there was going to be a yes. Both of them have insecurity issues. You know, vastly insecurity issues. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this. It's just for me looking at this. I think Chris's insecurities are a little bit more manageable. 
can manage his a little bit more. Nicole, she she's a classic case of literally get in your own way. Like she's gonna sabot she's a classic case of a self sabotage. She's and it's to the point that I don't think she can help it. Even even though she knows she does it. That's the crazy thing. She knows she does it. But I don't think she's gonna be able to help it. And I think you're right. I think Chris purposely tries to keep a calm demeanor because she is a way on the other side of the spectrum. You can't a person like that, let's just keep it real. You can't meet them halfway because it's just gonna be too one sided still. You have to pull back to the opposite direction to try to balance that out. Yeah, that's gonna drive her a little crazy, but it's you have to because it's gonna drive you crazy trying to match her. That, that, that that's just gonna make it worse. Now, it was interesting about the um about them having an argument thing. I understood Pascal. I get where he was coming from because he had a, a strong point. But I've always been on defense about that because I've never been an arguer. I would debate with you. We would talk like we are adults to one another. But the, I've always been the type, the moment you start yelling at me, I'm looking at you like you're crazy until you calm down. Like, who you talking to? Uh, my mom a couple of hundred, hundred miles away. And even she don't talk to me like that no more. What you talking about? Grown ass man. What you mean? No. Now, if you want to discuss things with me, I would discuss it all that. We can even have somewhat spirited discussions, but you ain't going to be yelling at me. Yeah, spirited discussions. I made my spirited discussion grow right now. You know, voice a little elevated. Maybe it's tad bit animated. But you ain't going to be yelling at each other. That, that, that doesn't help anything. So that part, I was like, all right, Pascal, wait a minute. Uh, yelling, arguments, eh, I get it. Because yeah, that is the thing. I don't think they, um, yeah, you really haven't seen. Well, we see them inflict some type of conflict resolutions or whatever. But it's been mostly Chris just saying, I right, kind of placating her. Like, all right. You know, it's cool. It's cool. It'll be okay. What not? There's only been what been like maybe one time that Chris was like, "Nah, I ain't doing that." <laughs> was that shirt issue? Like, nah, I ain't put that on. Like, no, <laughs> no, stop it. And then the second time, did he still acquiesce and put on that dumb behind suit? <sighs> yeah, <laughs> she's gonna be. She's gonna drain the heck out of him oh my yeah. god of course, of course he 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 will be um you know he's gonna get it every day pretty much right um because she doesn't know how to turn it off like you said she's aware of what she does and i think she is trying to work on it in some way i don't uh, you know she doesn't seem like she's the type of person that knows what it is and she's like well this is how i am tough like she feels like it seems like she's trying to you know uh acquiesce around around him right um but she's she is going to be draining it's going to be it's going to be um a problem at times but you know and and i also um heard him bring up the dinosaur t-shirt because that was an issue for him he went he did actually say you know we had the dinosaur issue and we're not going to do that again and da, 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 da. so it obviously was something that he felt she tried to control him and he probably felt embarrassed to wear it. It was a punishment type thing. So, you know, at least he vocalized that, look, that was a problem for me, but it wasn't a big deal. And, you know, he still loves her and he's prepared to make it work. So, you know, hope he knows what he's setting himself up for, though. This girl is catastrophizing and mind reading all all over the place. And with Dr. I don't know which one of the, the, the people said, Dr. Pepper or Pastor Cal, that when you guys do have a big blow up, I think that when she do, they do have a big blow up, she's going to be like, he hates me. He hates me. And it's all over. And that's it. He must hate me. And oh my God, like she is going to just 
it's going to be so, so big. And that's why he was saying the stuff about, listen, if I'm appeasing you, if it, it's, it's okay, I, it's not if something's not a big deal to me, I'm not going to fight about it. Well, then, well, I don't want you to appease me all the time. And it, but so she's the type of person was like, is her self-esteem is like, like me, please like me. How do you like me? You don't like me. What did I do wrong? Why don't you like it? And he's just like, okay, well, let me sit here and let me think about this instead of, you know, over, overreacting. But she, her, all of her, like, why don't you like me? Why don't we do this? Why? And she wants to overanalyze things to death and that's not him and she really needs to find that healthy balance but everything is some if they have a big argument it's going to be a catastrophe to her and she needs to stop because that is not going to it, and then she's and then she's the type that will also say something that she shouldn't say in <laughs> or say something that she doesn't mean to him in, in blow-ups and she needs to just pull back and really really think before she before she reacts exactly because i think with nicole some things just don't need to be said she can think them but that's the problem she overthinks and she will keep going over the same thing over and over again in her mind and then she blurts it out so you know you're right what she needs to do is is get with a therapist or someone that she can you know some wise counsel that she can talk through how she feels in certain instances that trigger these erratic thoughts you know because um it, you know he doesn't seem like he's going to be able to put up with it for like but he is part of their relationship she just has to, like i said the good thing is she realizes it and she's trying to consciously make an effort to minimize it because she doesn't like the way she feels she said she doesn't like the way she feels when she when she does those things because she realized that it kind of hurts him so you know uh it's it, it's part of her package but I'm, but hopefully it doesn't unravel all the way it, like on a consistent basis to make him feel demoralized about being with her you know yo somebody just reminded me of this in the chat yo we, we should have had a live last week coach because did y'all remember that part <laughs> when it was with that group of men and she called her husband a beta male. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. <laughs> listen, that was bad. listen. When they rewatch this, which I know they probably rewatch this by now, yeah, let's not be surprised if Nicole and Chris are having issues or even together. Because if I was rewatching that, I'm like, wait a minute, you standing in a group of men and you call me a beta male? What? And, and confidently and proudly too. Oh, yeah. And and with no prompting either. Like, I mean, you know, for the way she did it, boy, I'm surprised that <laughs> I'll surprised be honest. That you, didn't hear about it. This, you know, I feel like, uh, forgive me, I'm about to step on some toes. You know, we find it funny, like when they put men in these situations, a group of guys and some girls come up, or oh, oh, temptation, what's gonna happen? Who's gonna say the wrong thing? So I, I I'm almost convinced some women just don't know how to handle when they get put in this situation. Cause this was all a setup last week. You got those whole group of men come out of nowhere, and the only one to actually follow protocol is Kirsten. Kirsten. Mm -hmm. It's Kirsten. Exactly. Out of all of them, Kirsten. <laughs> Out of everybody. Well, I'm trying I to tell y'all. She knew what she was doing. Kirsten ain't stupid. I get her that. Kirsten's not stupid. She was like, mm -mm, I see what's going on here. Mm -mm -mm. You ain't about to catch me. The rest of them acting the plum fool. You know, Jasmine tried to be like Kirsten, but, you know, she going through her little issues, so the attention felt good to her. I understand. It still look bad, but I understand. Gina, of course, she don't care. But if you notice, she, she wasn't getting no attention in that crowd. Ooh. Exactly. And that's Ooh. why I think she she stayed quiet because she wasn't getting attention. No, they you know, they people have speculated that Gina might even like Chocolate Brothers, right? Yeah. And, and they there was a group of Chocolate brother. Brothers and none of them moved to her. So they were checking, you know, that, they that checking for Nicole. They were exactly. checking for Nicole over her. Exactly. That might have been a, we ain't a little, wanna. That that might have been a little humbling moment for her too. 
thinking mm. that she she's bad like that you know and be laughing exactly so we yeah listen i hear what you guys are saying so chris and nicole definitely feel like you know with chris and nicole that nicole needs to 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 just a little bit of therapy just to calm her nerves down a little bit so she doesn't over jealously do it um but it's quite interesting she's got she's got her anxiety uh is one aspect of her but she is quite the assertive person when she needs to be when she wants to get ish done so i agree with you last week i actually did watch that part where she had no problem, but the drink, you see, that's the problem with drink. Drink will have you saying stuff. People, listen, this, this is a lesson to learn. Stop drinking too much, right? Stop drinking too much because you'll be saying some stuff you can't take back. She can't take that back now. And, you know, who knows how he going to receive it when he get the thing. Yet she was cranking and crying when he told her, listen, I ain't going to lie to you. You know, <laughs> you know how you are a little bit. You know how I, you know how she got a little bit emotional by the fact that he told her how you. <laughs> but, um, you know, so, you know, the quickness of speed of her to say, like, you know, yeah, he had a beta male, but you know, I love him. And I, listen, I do appreciate it. she doesn't she does cover him. But in that moment, she un she uncovered him and told us how she really feels about him. He a bitch. That's what she's trying to say. So this is my French. I don't want to say it, but that's what she wanted to say without saying it. He a bitch. Okay? And that's what she's going to say, right? Similar to, that's why she can really identify with Kirsten, because he was looking at Shia like, he a bitch. Okay? Um, and that's how they feel about them, you know? Uh, don't ever let your woman feel like you're a bitch. Okay? Because that, that it's the beginning of the end at that point, you know? And then it's, it's yeah, dangerous too. Don't voice it, because you know the Negroes, them, some people some people can't take that too, you know? Chris, Chris, the, the, listen, before you know it, somebody's on the news, you know, telling us you know, he, he shot up the house and then he, he shot himself. You know, these things happen, you know, because people are a, a little bit emotional. So we've got to be very careful. I'm just saying. So, uh, yeah, no, I definitely saw that as well. So um, but she I think she is a little bit scared to 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 lose Chris as well, but just needs to heal that part of her. Go for it, Joe. Yeah, like I, I agree with you 100 percent, man, like. Looking at how Chris's personality type seems to be, like her saying that after he now loves her and feels the way he does, if he sees that comment or hears about her saying that, that's the type of stuff that would would affect him deeply. He's gonna be like, "What you you don't respect me, or you you think I'm a bitch, or you know, oh man, like he that's gonna demoralize him." Right, because like I said, now he has proper feelings invested, and he said yes to marrying her. So if that's how she really feels, oh dear, like that that doesn't bode well. So I'd like to see how she explains that on the reunion if they air that clip. They may not because they may not want to, um, you know, expose that side of 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 the interaction between the decoys, because that's what they were. They were decoys sent there to test test the women. Right, some of the women aren't attracted to their partners, so send some guys to try and hit on them and see who takes the bait. Oh, they airing that. They, air, they watch. They gonna talk about that. That's gonna be the hey. Let's talk about that scene with the ladies was at the bar and the men came over. Nah, that was all yeah. set up. You know what? You're you actually know. right because, like everyone's been saying, this season's been a snooze fest and it's been dragged out. So they need some spice and something saucy to get people interested in the reunion right yep hey, i know everybody's asking these questions listen yes some people have alpha personalities some people have beta personalities that's just a given but when you put a negative connotation on that personality in regards especially in regards to your partner it can always be bad, especially when it's women going towards men. But let's keep it real. If I go around here and say, yeah, my chick, she just, she just has a little beta personality. Oh, so she a pushover. Oh, so, you know, she has nothing about her. Some women would get upset about that too. Some women would get upset about that too. Exactly. And some would even get upset if you said, you know, my girl's, my girl's masculine. You know, she she carries this alpha male energy. Be like, what? Like she she wears the pants. She runs you, bro. That, that would be the natural thing to do, right? Uh, to assume. But yeah, so that comment might might land uh, Nicole in in some hot water, and we'll see how that could be their first blow up. That could be one of the reasons why they go at it for the first time, right? Um, but we'll see. 
we'll see. It's at least that is something to look forward to, to see if they do air it and to see how that pans out for them. Oh, I think they will. I think it's, I think it's coming. Yeah, I think, I've, I think it would. If if Kirsten had said that about Shaq, for example, then yeah, it would be it would be over. Yeah, well. Kirsten's not that. See, here's the thing I will, caught on. Shaq will play back. Shaq will say yeah. something about it. Here's the thing I caught on to Kirsten real quick early on. Kirsten has we have seen two different Kirstens on the show. We got the very reserved immune person in front of the camera i'm um, one way person but we've also seen little glimpses of the real person that shaq's been hitting to when the cameras are gone behind the scenes or whatever that curse is a little different you know that person nah she saw them dudes roll up she went mm -mm. nah you ain't about to catch me <laughs> in this book crap coming now nah, i see what's about to happen nah nah I respected her for that. I had I had to give it to her. I respected her for that. I was like, okay, you was paying attention. <laughs> you was paying attention. I see you. All right. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. All right. They're going to move on. I don't know. We had much to talk about in the Chris Nicole. Well, clearly we did. Uh, so <laughs> the spirited conversations that trailers talk about. Um, let's go to the uh, uh, next. Uh, let's go to uh, let's go about Aris and Jasmine because that was interesting. Uh, Aris and Jasmine, um, you know, they, 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 oh, wow. Let me just say this. You know, I felt for, I felt for Jasmine a little bit as well, you know, because, uh, our boy uh, uh, Aris was uh, trying to throw her a little bit under the bus. But what was you guys' thoughts? In why, why is why is <laughs> yes, Crystal, go for it and then jail. I really want to know what you gentlemen thought of his suit. What? Uh, what are we talking about? Shaq suit, which was the worst. <laughs> oh no, we're to, we're talking about Aris at the moment, though, right? Oh, well, I'm sorry. Aris, you didn't yeah. cover them yet. Oh, no, no, no. We're, we're getting them. Well, don't worry, we're, we're oh, coming. Hold on, don't worry. worry. I'm yeah, we, so I'm down. We're heating I'm up the barbecue down. for Jack. We're, we're, we're heating yeah. up. We turn on the oven for him. Like, yeah. Put the oil in the pan. Don't worry. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah, I know you're trying to cook on them. I get it. I'm sorry. Calm down. <laughs> no, it's good for it, Joe. Well, um, yeah. So, I I think Aris did a very similar tactic to what Gina did with Clint. Right, he when he started speaking about, uh, you know, she doesn't love herself and all these other things, I was like, dude, bruh, when did you see that? Even she turned around and fixed her face up to be like, huh? you know, nah, she actually was just hoping that there would be a connection between you two and there would be some affection and some chemistry, it's nothing to do with her loving herself. Unless there was some stuff that we didn't see, right? But he, listen, Aris, he actually played a game the whole way through. He knew he wasn't feeling her from the start, right? But to try and make it something that she was doing or she, that wasn't the case. He was not into, into her. For whatever reasons, maybe he likes a different um, type of personality, Maybe he's used to dating a different type of girl. But, you know, him thinking that he would be ready for marriage, I think was his his biggest mistake. He's not ready. He doesn't have it in him to give the level of affection and intimacy needed to have a successful marriage in or, or relationship, right? It's just not there. I think he's more used to the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Okay, I'll holler at you next Friday, date night do something right he's not ready for the every day and and even when he tried to say you know what when i came home and i put my keys in the door and she's not there you know i missed her what did you miss though aris and how did you show that you missed her like where was the lovey-dovey where where was the cuddling where was the kissing where was the i miss you girl you know where's the where's all that kissing and petting it wasn't there because he wasn't feeling her it's all lip service he he just wasn't into it from the start. So I'll end my plane there. 
Okay, I'm sorry. I'm back now. <laughs> um, yeah, Eris did the same thing that Gina did, but, and I said this a couple of weeks ago, there is a difference between being confident and boastful about yourself. There's a difference between, he wanted her to be, um, have some more swagger. There's a difference between somebody being um, confident in, in themselves and having that swagger and having that just being boast and um he used a, a word i can't think of it now y'all know in the chat let me know but there is a difference i absolutely believe that she is confident i just don't think but oh she wasn't but she's humble and he didn't want her to be humble he wanted her to be um loud and um uh talk about herself and just you know have that all of that swagger up front and that's just not her I think that she really did want to carry herself like a lady and be respectful. And he didn't like that. That does not mean in him saying, oh, well, I get up every morning and say, you know, um, uh, and I like myself. I, I don't I, I definitely, love myself. I love myself. This I don't think that she didn't love herself. But I do think that if you were with somebody for two months that that you care about, that you're married to, you want them to care about you, too. And it does have an effect on you, and you start to the your in those insecurities start to creep up when you're not hearing that back, and then, and also you're sitting there um, telling that person what you like about them, but they're not they're not giving you any um, accolades in return. That's tough, and so of course you start. She started to not like um, what she saw in the mirror, but I I. I I call cap on him, you know, getting up every morning and saying how I love myself. And you may not hear me because you still sleep. Oh, please, boy, shut up. I just, I disagree with that all altogether. Um, and I'm glad that she said something in return. If he would have even said she's confident, but she doesn't, but she's too humble. I want somebody that's more humble. I would have been like, okay, cool. I, I, I got you on that. But the way he said, I want somebody that, that loves themselves. I want somebody that, I don't think Eris loves himself. I truly don't believe that Eris loves himself. So I, um, I think that he needs somebody to love themselves. So he will, it's almost like they evened each other out. Because just like we said with, with Nicole and Chris, they need the opposite a little bit. He needs somebody to be a little bit more boastful so he can be less calm so he can have that confidence to it, it motivates you you know and he needs that body to give him that motivation and she didn't do it and she when she wanted that in return but I'm so glad that she said to him he never put his best foot forward when I stood there and I saw him I said at least my husband is cute I at least wanted somebody that was cute she tried he never gave enough when he didn't try in the beginning Anything that looked like effort was not trying at all to her. So I'm glad she said something behind that. I'm glad she said something to him in the back um, behind that afterwards. And um, she, her dress was very pretty. She looked very pretty and she carries herself very well. So um, I think that, what's her name? Her, her DM, Jasmine's DMs are going to be full. And Ares can go back to dating video vixens and um, being alone at, in his big house, which is uh, just tiny face and... That's it. Um, I actually agree with you guys, but I'm a. I think I'm gonna be a little controversial. <clears throat> when the conference, yeah, this might start a fight. I don't know. We gonna see what happens. <clears throat> when Eris was talking, at first I was thinking like, hmm, all right, this this is gonna be amicable. We know it's gonna be a no. They both said no. Just let it go. Just let it ride out. Then they kept talking. And I saw where Eris was going with it. I was like, no, no, don't do it. No. No, don't. Like, like for a whole minute, I saw it coming. Because in my mind, I saw where he was going with it. You know, the way she kind of <laughs> been leaning over on him. I'm like, oh no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And he said it. And this is what happened in my mind. I looked at the screen. First, the cut to Jasmine. Jasmine's looked over. Oh, she's triggered. Then they immediately cut to Dr. Pepper. 
I'm gonna be honest with you. The way Dr. Pimple Faces was looking, it looked like she didn't disagree with his statement. Because the only one of the experts that spoke up a little bit was Doc was Cap Pastor Cal. He tried to no, no, that's this is wrong immediately. Pepper just looked like like she kind of thought the same thing. Now, I'm going to give maybe one possible reason why. Like I said, I don't really agree with it, but I'm going to give one possible reason why. Let's, let's keep it real. The way Eris was acting, how he treated her, most people would hug. This is going to be messed up for me to say, but I will say it. Most people with some type of self respect about themselves, or somebody phone going off, or that's Kojo. Sorry about that. My phone is going off, bro. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Most people who has any type of self respect about themselves will have never let Aries gotten away with how he treated Jasmine. Most women would have been went off on him. And that's somewhat what he was saying to her all season like she doesn't speak up for herself. Because he knows he's been acting like trash to her. He knows he has. And for the most part, she hasn't said a thing. But that goes that just goes to her personality. She's not, as he said before, non-confrontational. But it was interesting. I know Crystal, hang on. It was interesting when he did say that, Jasmine immediately went off. Like, oh nope, you pushed her too far. And he looked happy about it. He was like, oh yeah, yeah, this this is. This is what I this is what I want from her. This yeah, this is it. He likes that chance. But the fact that he has to push her to do it, it was just wrong. I, I was just like, no, don't say this. Don't say this. But I have to say, did he have a slight point? Eh, I don't know. I didn't like it. I didn't like the moment he said it. I don't think he should have said it. But for argument's sake. Did he have a point? Even slightly. I don't know. I'm a I'm a I'm a go along with you on one point. Okay, it's very interesting you say that. He's more like one of those dads or one of those um parents that will put you down and make you do better. He's like one of those people that um that oh well let me let me poke at her and make, make to to get her to fight or to get her to do better. And that's wrong. That's and that it is. But so that might have been so her, him saying that made her fight a little her. bit. It pushed right? her, right? But I, I'll, but also her, she can you can still have confidence and be passive aggressive. I will agree with you. There were some points this summer. I will. I, I fell on my sword. I apologize. She was passive aggressive, and she even admitted, "I am not the one." I let things go. I so she definitely says she's passive aggressive, but you can still be passive aggressive and be confident. So yes. I disagree that like there were times when she just like let stuff go. When you said um, somebody like that has confidence in themselves would never let him talk talk about you the way he did. I just don't think that I think that she gave up and she stopped caring. I think that even with I think that she's like I know myself and i'm done with this so she just stopped caring and she she was out of it she mentally that was she checked out but to a certain point but i will agree with you that he is that even there were i think that was when dr pia came by and he said well yeah that it turns me on when we fight and and see it to jasmine she's like that sounds crazy <laughs> so so i will agree with you on that point on that point but so I, I hear you on that. I, that and honestly, that's really toxic, and that's really yes. He likes exactly. toxic. It, and likes also, toxic. guess what? Like he keeps on talking about sex, right? Make up sex after the arguments and the toxicity. All right. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about this earlier, right? It seems as if Jasmine romanticizes about the relationship and Eris sexualizes the relationship, right? So she has an idea of what the relationship's gonna look like and it seems to be her images 
you know, there's romance, there's kissing, there's cuddling, there's affection, there's all that stuff. Eris is more talking about, man, what position are we going to do? And, you know, he talk, talks about married sex and, you know, yeah, you can put my leg up here and do all this. Yeah, like, it's definitely a, a, a clash in, in their ideals of what they're actually looking for. And because he doesn't see that, um, what he's looking for in her, then it's automatically made him check out from very early. The only journey and progress that Eris made was actually with himself, to a degree, identifying that he has work to do. Because we have seen elements of him, you know, um, I won't say taking accountability, but realising that he has some really glaring issues that he didn't know until he got into this process. He I still isn't cut out for marriage, in my opinion, though. Right. I have one controversial thing to say as well. You know, we said about Gina not liking um, men. I don't think Eris likes women. I think that he sexualizes women. I think that he has this cart like this anime view of women, but I don't think he likes them as um, and wants to get to know them or anything. I don't think that he likes women. I'm, and yeah. I don't think that he's gay. I don't, mm. I'm not saying that he's gay. I just don't think that he likes women. I don't think that he, um, that he likes women. No, as so I would say, and I, I think, think he, he noticed that he has work to do, as you just said. I don't yeah. think he likes women. I, I think I think he likes women in the aspect that some men do, which is they like them for what they can get from them sexually. He right? sees yeah. women. Instead right. of getting to know them, go through the ups and downs, the minutia of the relationship, he ain't got time for all of that because yeah, he, he knows doesn't see them as actual people. He yeah. sees them as sexual objects. So, so that means he doesn't like women. He sees he like women as he sees and speaks to women as objects. Whenever you see him talk about women, it's always in some type of ob objective or object form. He's so, yes, he, yes, he sees them as an object to either attain or conquer. I don't think that doesn't have he doesn't have to be gay, but he just doesn't like them. He doesn't like as people. He doesn't so, like women. Because what, what he was alluding to when he talked about marriage sex, for example, is he thought that they would be humping every day all day yeah. long. Oh, That's man, what he ended with. Y'all, yeah. that, <laughs> that was his last scene. Exactly. Unfortunately, unfortunately there isn't. But <laughs> yeah, it doesn't go like that. If you're not if you're not attracted to the person, then how are you gonna be gonna, you know? Like, so that's why I think he he kind of was like, yeah, you know, it's not going down. He's not attracted. Yeah, he's not attracted to her. So the humping that he expected is not going to take place. So, you know, he, he just checked out for that reason. Completely wrong reason to get married in the first place. You know, if you just want a, a partner who you're just going to be banging, you know, that's not marriage. And I remember saying this early on. I said, he's going to, he doesn't like the fact that he's going to have to actually work at this relationship. He doesn't like the fact that he's going to, oh my God, I'm going to have to actually try. Uh uh. That's not, that's not what he wanted to do. He just wanted to have the, the sex and that's it. He doesn't actually like women. Big Sean on the block. Sean back in full effect, back in the house. Big Sean from up top. No, that's Tony. That's Tony's from up top. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I would say from the bottom, but you know, listen, that's a little bit dangerous. Pause. Well, not say that. Pause. <laughs> my bad. Pause. I had to work on my pauses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, coach, don't oh, play the pause game. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't play the pause game. <laughs> You are just don't sink, do it. You know? <laughs> just don't do it. Bye bye, boys. <laughs> but yeah, sure. We'll just talk about uh, Aris and Jasmine. If you want to have your say, jump in, bro. Yes, yes. Did we get to my favorite couple? We got them already. Yeah, they're, they're last, so you're lucky. Woo! Good timing. Praise God. <laughs> so, Aris and Jasmine. Um, I, I just, I, I just so needed for her to choose herself, but you know what I, what, what kind of threw me is why did they make so many of the women go first, you know? And I don't know if that's an editing thing, but I'm just so glad. Cause I was nervous. I was like, she just might say yes. And I'm so glad she said, no, I'm so glad she realized she deserved better. 
Uh, I know that we didn't, um, you know, get a chance to talk about last week, but I could tell that there was something going on when she was open to that 740. <laughs> she was getting open off the BMW. So she was already, you know, realizing that there's other men out here that are interested in her. And, um, you know, she made the right choice. So Aris, I don't know about him. Every time I hear him talk, he doesn't sound like somebody that's 39 going on 40 years old. So there's definitely, he, the brother needs to do some work because, and they keep pushing them to discover what intimacy is. They found a, a small little bit of a friendship. They don't even have a good solid friendship if you ask me, because it's very one-sided, but I'm so glad that uh, Jasmine chose her, chose to, to say no, and she realized she deserved better. So that gives me hope for her future. I was I was just gonna say about last week as well. It it was it was quite um, interesting how they cut straight from her interaction with the guy talking about yeah, like I got my car outside X Y and Z. They cut straight to her going to the crib. And Aris in the bed, and then she she's telling him about the evening. So it didn't really show <clears throat> what happened. Did they walk outside the club, walk to the car, anything like that? Maybe we'll see that in some cut scenes, or you know, talk about that at the reunion. Please, she didn't even tell him about what actually happened. You're gonna have to rewatch that on the rewatch. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Hey, if you guys have rinsed out uh, uh, Aris and Jasmine, uh, no other things to what, say. What, 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 uh, what dark arts are you up to back there? Because you just seem a little, you seem a little distracted. <laughs> what are you up to? You what, need what not to worry to? about me, sir. <laughs> you need not to worry about what I'm doing, okay? Uh, there, that tells me all I need to know, because I listen. <laughs> You need not to worry, sir. Okay. <laughs> Dark ass in, in action, you know? Uh, so uh, I was talking about Shaq and Kirsten. Um, listen, Shaq and Kirsten, we didn't get a final say in terms of, well, final um, uh, point um, in terms of what they were going to choose, why they decided to mother freaking give us another episode for them to drop it like it was, uh, you know, a, a cliffhanger. I don't know. OK, but uh, we are here now at the Shaq and Kirsten situation. Um, Want to get you guys, guys and ladies thoughts as well on this couple. Maybe Sean should kick it open. I know you have various things to say on this, but this is uh, uh, Sean's favorite couple. So, Sean, open us up a little bit in a uh, uh, prayer of these two. What, what is it you want to to say about these two? Okay, After no, all, now you second. muted yourself. <laughs> he said. He said two seconds. Okay. <laughs> go do. Go, go do. We got to do. So go do. Go do. It's probably a door dash. No one's Sean. Um. <laughs> go for it, Trey. I really only got one. First of all, I don't. I do not understand. To your point, Coach, you said earlier, I do not understand why they couldn't just put his answer in this episode. Why are you dragging this out? This is ridiculous. I thought this year, I was like, all right, we're going to get it all in one episode. Cool, this was up. I mean, they were doing good. And then they cut it off at Shaq. What is this? But I only have one question. And I I, have, I really haven't gotten a good answer for this. And I'll wait. I really want Sean to answer this. But I, I'll wait for the answer. Somebody please explain to me why the kids to say yes. Give me a tangible reason. Why she would say yes? Because I'm gonna be honest with you. Say yes. I didn't even know she said yes. She said yes. She said yes, bro. He said yes. Thank bro. you. She said yes. What? That threw me. I was like, nah, this not happening. No, no, this makes no sense. And, and you gonna be? And you gonna leave the chat to be a no? But it sounds like he gonna say no. It could be a fake out. He could say yes to this. He probably it's probably a fake guy. He probably would say yes. But it's looking like a no. And I'm be honest with you, it should be a no. From both standpoints, from both of their sides, it should be a no. But she said yes. I went, what? 
what's happening here? This this don't make no sense. And I still haven't got a good, tangible reason from anybody why she should have said yes. Not what she feel. Give me a tangible reason. Well, there is one. I think it had to do with her father. But I, th- I really think that's it. But besides that, for her own volition, why does she say yes? I don't understand. Somebody help me. You asked, and I'm going to answer. So I need y'all to knock this cognitive dissonance off. The woman actually started to like the man. I don't know what the hell, what more do y'all need her to do? Backflips and somersaults? She actually started to like him, okay? And she was starting to really genuinely develop feelings for the, for the guy. So I don't understand why you guys are still going back to 20,000 episodes ago and still holding her accountable to that. I've been been saying this for the last three to four weeks that she is starting to develop a connection with him. And her saying yes is evidence of that. So y'all want to sit up here and call this woman the greatest actors of all actors. She is not. I'm sorry. She's not. But she liked the guy. Um, Yeah. For whatever reason. Um, And his confused multicolored suit told us all we needed to know because he is a ball of confusion, a ball of confusion, a ball of confliction, and a conundrum. So that's that. And then he's going to drag this out. And um, and uh, at the end of the day, you know, he's probably going to say no. Juzy G, you're probably the only person in the galactic solar system that liked that suit that Shaq was wearing. Juzy G, go away from us with that foolishness. That suit was horrible, horrible. I'm sorry, it was horrible. And the poor, the poor woman, I feel bad for her because she had so many hoops to jump through and so many things. Everything was a Oh, why now? Why now? Wine, wine, wine. Complain, complain, complain. Why am I just now meeting your dad? This is why you're just meeting the dad. Because you're annoying. All he did was complain and whine, complain and whine. And old girl, she gave him a chance. Now, I'm not saying she's perfect. She. You're muted, bro. My bad. So, yeah. At the end of the day, I hope he says no, so she can be free of free of the foolishness and she can move on. Did you? The, my last point, and I just want to revisit this. Did you see? Now, did you see when they was out with the fellas? I mean, they was out with the girls, and those fellas approached them, and um. She said, I just want to be home and be with my husband. So you 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 just think she's just capping. You could see her body language. You could see her in- energy. She was disinterested. She was disinterested. You know what I mean? And um, a couple of the other ladies were not. So it wasn't like she was going to be judged. They were all, you know, a couple of them, Nicole being the spokesperson, you know, she had one toe in and one toe out. But she was kind of interested in the attention. And we all know Jasmine was. So to me, signs that she really started to like the guy. That's it. So I, I, I'll admit, um, Kirsten started to grow on me in the last two episodes. First of all, because of what happened in the club, she shut that down very quickly and dis- disassociated from what all the shenanigans that were taking place, right? And I, I saw the interaction this episode when they were on the bed together before they left to go their separate ways to make their decision. 
man, those petty kisses and the affection that was there and the little playful kisses and everything, I was like, wow. So where was this before? This is what I was expecting to see from them early on. But because she spent, wait, so it's been two months. It's been 20 episodes our time. So you're talking at least 12 episodes where she was not feeling him. And at the time when she did start to feel him, it was partly because he was pulling away because he had kind of began to throw in the towel and think that he wasn't going to get anywhere with her. He kept reminding her also, I think he said it twice. If it's, if it's still like this by decision day, then I'm saying no. So that was weighing on her mind too. And then I also took from the father situation about him wanting to meet her father. I kind of took it like, he hasn't had a father figure in his adult life like that, right? His father's not around. His father passed away or whatever, right? But so I think he was trying to see who her father is, get to know him, build a relationship with him to some degree to get that father energy, if that makes sense. Even though it's not his dad, but it's his father-in-law. So just similar to how Nicole's father is with Chris. They've met, they've had conversations, and the father will give him tips, give him pointers. You're hanging there. You know, she may be a handful sometimes, but stick it up. Like that type of vibe, right? And I think Shaq was kind of looking to meet her dad, not just to see, I don't think it was about seeing how her relationship is with her dad. I think it was so he could build a relationship with the dad, if that makes sense. But yeah, so I'm. I was also looking at when they sat down with with the therapist, with Pastor Cal, and the doctor. I was genuinely confused about what he's going to say, because uh, looking at his 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 face as he was talking, he said a lot of good things. She said yes, despite the suit he was wearing. She still said yes, right? And so I believe she isn't that superficial because that suit was horrible. You know, he should go and burn it afterwards. But the way his face was, I was like, you're building this up so much. There's no way you're going to say no after what you after building up like that. He didn't seem like he had a bone to pick with her. He didn't seem like, you know what? <sighs> I've reached the point where it's over. No, he was smiling. Um, and I don't think he's that callous to let her say yes and then him not go through with it, you know? So I, I actually think there is a chance, despite everything I've been saying, up until this point, I think there is a chance that Shaq says yes, and they actually do make a couple. Crazy. Um, I'm going to start and say I knew they were going to leave this as a cliffhanger. Um, this show is so boring that I was looking at the time and I said they are going to leave his answer to next week and they're the only couple that's on the fence they step together they get along sometimes they don't get along or we can we can have them to the end i was like you guys are really pissing us off because this is ridiculous and um and also what J, um, jr just said that there all of these pregnant pauses i think the producers coached him a little bit look at her look away dude you know we're gonna we're gonna leave this as a cliffhanger to next week um uh, this suit, I tried to, I tried, I was like, okay, wait, if the pants, wait, and I kept looking, I said, no, I did, no, Shaq, you're wrong, you're, you're, you're just wrong for that, um, he could, have, and I know he makes ties, he could have picked one solid color and then a creative tie, he didn't have to do that to that suit, he did not have to do that, um, yeah, because I'm all for doing, you know, be creative, do, you know, show your personality. But no, you, that was wrong because I really I kept looking and I was like, I kind of like it. No, mm -mm, nope, not going to do it. Um, I do agree with Jr. that because she said yes, I think he's been on the fence. I think that he was like he's 
but he has been very decisive and said, if we're not getting along, if all of these different ups and downs in our relationship, I'm going to say no. I appreciate him saying that. I appreciate him letting her know, hey, if this is the way this is going to go, I'm going to say no. So that that projected her or that um, um, let her know, ooh, I need to say yes then. I, I'm sorry. I just, she may have started to like him, but... Uh, she ain't there. She ain't there yet. She's not there. And um, and she knows it. And she knows it. Uh, I think she's a big ball of confusion. I, I'm sorry. Shaq is a big ball of confusion. I will agree with you. Shaq is not perfect. Um, Shaq's got a lot of issues, but she is a big ball of confusion herself. And she likes to keep somebody confused. She likes to keep Shaq on the, on the leash a little bit or on the rope, whatever you want to call it, but she likes to keep him there and say, well, what about this? Well, I don't know. Well, you know, I like him now. I don't like him then. Oh, well, I don't like ball. He's like, she kept saying strike one, strike two. It's like she wanted to, it's like she wanted him to want her. You had that. You had, you wanted this man to beg and plead. You wanted him to be patient. You wanted to give yourself this idea of, of being this classy woman and, oh, I don't, I don't do this. I don't do that. And now uh, um, you let it all out that, you know, that's, that's the type of woman you are. And now you like him. So I think that she's as well, a big ball of confusion. So they'll probably say yes on decision day. And, um, and then when we see the reunion, uh, there's somebody else. There's there's somewhere else. They're not together. That's what I'm thinking. I agree with Jr. That they'll pro that because especially because she said yes. Now he's like, he's. I don't see him leaving her out there. I just don't see him leaving her out there hanging and saying no. Just just his personality. I could be wrong, but I just don't see it. I knew I knew they were going to leave this as a cliffhanger though. I was like, y'all wrong for this. That's it for now. Listen, there's nothing wrong with Shaq's Harvey Dent suit. You know, it's just not our style. That's all. <laughs> it's all it is. It just, it just don't work for us. You know, he probably sewed it together himself. It's all good. That, that, that takes skill. I'm actually impressed. All right, put together the suit, bro. I ain't crazy about the colors, but he definitely designed that suit. That's his design. That's what's up. But I'm be honest with you. I still ain't heard a good tangible reason why she should have said yes. Oh, she like him now? I'm be honest. I don't believe it. I think it's all cap. It's almost given like she only likes him because her, her family or her daddy likes him. So now she feels like she got to like him. That's what it feels like to me. She needed permission from everybody else. Because in the beginning, she didn't like him. Her family did. Her cousins have the, oh, girl, he fine, girl, he cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. She wasn't feeling him. For like three, four weeks, wasn't feeling him. Called this man, basically said he was a man to her. What, well, we forgot this? Do you respect him as a man? No. What? What? Where are you getting the word respect that. from Trey? Don't go she off said on the Trayism. She didn't say respect. She said, "Do you nope. think he's masculine?" Uh, we kind of equate those two together. No, so, no, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Coach. Trey, if I say you're not masculine, what, black, is, what am I telling? Pastor mode. You just running. You just running. Yeah, he just he just ran and clean off. He just off. ran himself right out the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't know what I, I swear y'all have cognitive dissonance. Y'all want to y'all want to disbelieve that she does not she did not care for this guy so much that you're just gonna create narratives. Oh, so now because her pappy liked him, now she's willing to say yes and ruin the rest of her life for somebody that she don't want because her daddy like him. I mean, come on, people. Come it's called on. it's called keeping up appearances, though. You know. Okay. So a, when yeah. does it end? Like, guys, come on. 
where can we just, you know, it's not about being right. I don't need to be right. I don't need to be wrong. It's just like at a certain point, what, what are you looking for? What do you need the woman to do in order to for you to, to remotely believe it? Or is it that you just are so entrenched in in just, you know, wanting to believe that she does not care for this guy at all, that you just are unwilling to accept the fact that she might not like him i mean that she might like him like it just it no. just can't be it can't be no she's lying no she's making this up oh no there's some big check at the end so now she's waiting for some big check that's going to get her closer to her 2.9 million dollar house come on come on guys listen I'm glad you no, said I, it. yeah no i i listen sean i gave her kudos i said in the last few weeks she's actually won me over a bit i'm i'm i was surprised she said yes but also um you know i'm not sure at this point if the attraction is to the level where i completely believe that she's feeling him like that right that's what i'm saying it came so late in the day for her to have this for the switch to go off for the light bulb to turn on and be like oh wait there's only three four in fact now there's 21 episodes yeah there's like 10 weeks till decision day maybe i need to change some things like at the end of the day i'm gonna take it for what it is i think she she is attracted to him like i said their little playful stuff that they were doing this episode i was like where has this been like this is what i kind of thought you two would have been doing if you were feeling each other there would have been plenty of that stuff going on but it just seemed more like friends, more like buddies, more like a Clinton and Gina vibe for a long time. So that's why, you know, for a long time, I wasn't convinced. But like I said, in the last couple of episodes, I must admit, Kirsten, I do believe Kirsten has, has grown in her attraction to him. He's still the same dude that she was like, strike one, he's bored. Strike two, he's younger than me. Strike three, he better begin in the bedroom. That was her three strikes from that from that well, outset. All three, how many of them three strikes did? <laughs> you want to think about it. All them three strikes was out, and she still said yes. So there was some type of connection. You and know and the mean? suit, yeah, and the suit, you know. Appearances, so, appearances. Trey, I, I'm, yeah. I can't even engage in conversation. No, with you. no, but the thing is, so so all that all that proved to me is. She overcame the aesthetic. She overcame the visual, not being attracted to the visual. She like his personality grew on her, right? Yeah. And and that's that's what she was. That's what she's working with right now, right? She said yes based on his personality, not the fact. So so we we've had conversations, and you and Koja have had conversations many times. If you're not feeling me, don't choose me. You know, if you're not attracted to me, don't choose me, right? Because we know as men, we want to have some level of, like, even though, yes, traditionally, we have to do more of the pursuing or initiate stuff, but we also want that reciprocation in some respect, maybe even if it's not as much, but just something to say, right, you're feeling me, you know, and then we can go from there. But the, one of the worst things you can do is be in that relationship dynamic and your partner isn't feeling you and you're feeling them. Like I was saying before you came on, you know, Kirsten is definitely an attractive lady. And for Shaq to have liked her as much as he did initially and to know he can't touch, he can't joke, he can't be himself around her she's always trying to critique things for the first few weeks you know that must have been hard to wake up every day next to her and have to be hands off and give her the grace and all of that even though i respect him for it I, i'm just saying it must have been challenging so by the time he starts to realize you know this might not be going anywhere you know like he started to check out and miss ioni even if he didn't like her like what you think, he liked her more than she liked him. That's the point. So if we're going to give Shaq smoke, then we also have to 
realized that the roles were reversed for a long time. She was not feeling him. And she weren't convincing nobody otherwise. She pointed them out. That's all we're saying. So I I, 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 I can see, Sean. I'll take it. <clears throat> I'll take the first oh, two minutes yeah. of what you said. <laughs> and I'll take that as a win is a win. Everything else I could concede to. So I'll, there's, you, you get no pushback from me. I see we have a beautiful be young lady that joined the, uh, the panel. Hello, Camille. Welcome, Camille. Welcome, Camille. Well, what is, what is, hi. hi, everyone. Jumping for us, Camille. <laughs> okay, so um, I've been watching the panel all season, and um, I respect everyone's opinion. Um, I know we're talking about Shaq and Kirsten right now. I must say, I totally, as far as an overall synopsis of the dynamics between Shaq and Kirsten, I totally resonate more so with a lot of Sean's opinions about how that dynamic breaks down. And I have to say too, that um, I just felt like Kirsten got a lot of smoke from the, from the very beginning. Um, she got a lot of smoke about the attraction piece. And that was funny to me because she never out and out came to Shaq and said, I'm not attracted to you. That was just her initial impression um, at the altar, but I don't re I don't recall her ever going to him going to Shaq and saying I'm not attracted to you like in the way that Aris did um, Jasmine. He was he was very blunt and almost rude with it, and I'm just trying to see where where the where the smoke for for Kirsten was from the very beginning. But <laughs> that aside. Coming to the coming to the end, right? Um, I really do feel like if if you look at if you look at Kirsten's behavior throughout, she was always affectionate with with Shaq. She was always sitting near him. She was always rubbing his head. Um, she was always holding his hand. She was never standoffish in the way that Clint, um, that um, I can't remember Gina was with Clint. Gina was very standoffish. She didn't give Clint the opportunity after that conversation in Jamaica about the attraction piece and, uh, af you know, athleticism and ginger hair and all that. She never gave Clint the time of day. She didn't, she didn't show any, um, she didn't make any forward movement toward him. Whereas Kirsten, even though she may have a, her impression of Shaq initially, was I'm not I'm not immediately drawn to him. She gave him opportunity. She gave him space. So when we're coming down to the end of this, and she, the whole time has been invested in what's been happening, for us to get to the end and then say, well, her response, her choice was not genuine. I just don't get that. I don't get that piece. She never struck me as disingenuous. She struck me as a person who was more reserved and wasn't immediately impressed with Shaq, which to be honest, as, as time progressed, I see why she wasn't impressed with him um, for a myriad of reasons. <laughs> he, Shaq is a, is a very nice guy, but I can tell he's emotionally needy. And that doesn't make a woman feel safe. It doesn't make her feel attractive. It doesn't make her feel comfortable because she constantly has to be in the place of reassurance and walking on emotional eggshells and that kind of thing. So if I was, I was actually rooting for Kirsten to say no, but I do believe she's developed an attraction to him and she sees some potential there. And she's also made some emotional investments because she strikes me as the person who kind of lays back in the cut and she does not make rash decisions. She takes her time. So for her to open up with him at the end, I feel like that was very, um, I feel like it was a bad decision. I feel like she should have said no. I was, asking, I was pleading for her to say no, but I see why she said yes. 
And I think Shaq actually wants to say no. He might, to save face, say yes, but I think he wants to say no. I have a quick question. Were you so obviously you expressed your disappointment in Kirsten saying yes? Why do you think she said yes? Like, because it isn't the attraction piece, right? And if it is for the personality aspect, is that a legitimate reason to commit to a long, what could potentially be a long term marriage if it's? you know, if they stay together. I think, I think Kirsten is attracted to him, but I really do feel like guys don't get, they really see attraction just from their, their viewpoint. They don't get how women view attraction. And it's totally, it's totally different than how men view attraction. And, and this is just me speaking personally, but a man can be attractive or become attractive to you for a myriad of other things outside your initial physical attraction to him. Whereas I feel like men, if they're not physically attracted to you, it's kind of like a no-go from the beginning. Um, it's like an all-in-one kind of, I assess you, I'm attracted to you or not attracted to you for whatever reasons. I feel like women, we develop attraction based on a myriad of, of other different aspects of a man. And that can grow over time to where we are genuinely attracted. Now, that is different from actually being repulsed by a person. If I'm repulsed by you, if a woman is repulsed by a man initially, I don't think that ever grows into something beyond just respect or um, friendship. But I do feel like Kirsten did grow to have perfection and attraction to Shaq. So I think she 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 weighed a lot of other different um, aspects of the relationship. And I think that's the reason why she said yes. Number one, I think she she's a person that goes in once she decides to go in and she doesn't want to not admit defeat, that's the wrong uh, terminology, but she's a, I think she's a go-getter, she's a winner. So if she's invested in something, she wants to see it out to the end. And I think she became invested in the relationship. And she, I think she sees some type of potential there in Shaq and the ability to grow. Um, and I think that's why she said yes. I don't think it was a good decision, but I think that's why she said yes was because of those factors. So I, I understand your point. The problem is, is, and this is a lesson, all right? Not, not to you personally or anything, <laughs> but when you meet someone, right? Be careful how you critique them. Because if you're critiquing things that they cannot change, i.e. what she said, he's bald. That's the first strike. Second strike, he's younger than me. Right? You're and you're right, she didn't say that directly to him. And that's kind of even worse because she said it to her friends and family first and she said it to the experts, but she didn't say it directly to him. So I think one of the reasons why I was like, Kirsten, that's not how you, how you start this because you, you're calling out flaws that he cannot change. And even if you do grow to like him, if those issues that you had are still there, he hasn't grown Afro, he ain't grown hair, he's still the same bald guy, attraction-wise, physically-wise, he's still him. The age thing, he can't change. So she automatically thought he would be more immature. So I think some things are best kept in your mind as thoughts rather than expressing them because sometimes they can come back to bite you in that way. And for us men, yes, we do view attraction differently to women. We're supposed to because we're different. But we also take 
the physical criticisms differently as well. All right? We are realists, but at the same time, we don't expect the lady that we're with or we are, you know, he, Shaq definitely thought he he got a great catch when he saw her. And he probably has, you know, but he expressed how he felt about her for quite a while throughout the, the, the season. And all she had to comment initially was he had a nice suit. When they were by the lake and he asked her, so what are the things you like about me? We still don't know because she couldn't answer. So, yes, I agree. We see things differently in terms of men and women, the good stuff we go for in relationships. But, you know, just like Gina did with Clint when she said, you're ginger and I don't typically go for gingers. That's exactly what Kirsten did by saying, you know, he has no hair and he's short. Uh, sorry, he's, he's younger than her. You know, it's the same thing. It just wasn't done in such a callous way, but it's just, it's like you're putting it out there already and it's a very difficult hurdle to overcome as a guy because the odds are against us straight away as soon as you make those criticisms. I'm going to go and then I'm going to let uh, Ludwin go. So I'm going to be really quickly, really quick, excuse me. Um, thank you for your uh, for your thoughts. I agree with you. We as women see attraction very differently and attraction can grow. I've definitely fallen in love with somebody that I was not immediately attracted to, but he was hilarious. He did other personality traits came through and I, the attraction grew around that. So men and women do um, uh, grow in attraction differently. But I remember, and I could be wrong, if, if, if someone remembers the exact episode, he didn't say it like Eris said it. They didn't call her a four or five and he didn't, he wasn't as crass and, um, um, the way he said it, uh, or sorry, the way she said it might have been a different, but she definitely said, I did not want a bald man. He, she definitely said, I'm not attracted to you like that. She definitely said certain things that let him know my wife does not like me, my wife. And, and that's why he, he pulled all the way back and he's like, how patient am I supposed to be? Yes. She is somebody that wanted him to go. She wanted to go very slow and she wanted to go. Um, and she is somebody that takes her time. I agree with you on that, but they also have two months. And he's like, how patient should I be? Um, how, how am I supposed to navigate this? He definitely, I'm sorry. She definitely said to him, I'm not attracted to you like that. He, she definitely said, I did not want a bald man. She criticized the way he talked to her. She criticized, she criticized different things about his personality. So to him, she's like, she's not attracted to me physically. She's not attracted to me person, my personality. So where am I supposed to go from here? So that's those things. That's how she started. And as JR was saying, be careful how you start something. And then you're going to um, flip the script on me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's why we criticized that in the beginning. Um, yes, she may grow into it. And I will agree with you. And this is my last point. I was hoping she would say no to, but now that she has said yes, uh, that means I don't see him saying no, but Hey, if he does great, but I, um, I was hoping that she would say no. So that's all I've got to say for now. Thank you. Hey, Ludwin. Is it my turn? Yay! What up, y'all? I ain't seen y'all in six, seven weeks. <laughs> I've been busy. Um. Okay, so we're talking about Shaq and, and Kirsten. Um, I wish I was here from the beginning, but I was celebrating Haitian Flag Day. Woohoo! Ew. <laughs> but um. If this man says no, he will regret the opportunity to be with a baddie for the rest of his life. Because how dare he have the attitude of someone who can do better than Kirsten? You know what? He deserves Jasmine. That's what he, he deserves. Because how dare he 
act like he can get better than Kirsten. You had to be on a reality TV show to be matched with somebody who looked like Kirsten. Because in your regular life, I bet you, you don't date a Kirsten in real life. And you know what I've learned as of recently for the past two years? Sometimes a man who don't like you will try to bring you down to a peg because you're too pretty and it, and it will make you feel like so tiny. They don't like you. They will try to find any type of ways to bring you down. The man was complaining about coming to see you at a, 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 a work function. Bro, do, do we remember if he ever took on a date, the whole show? An actual date? We have Clinton and Gina who went out on dates. Nicole and what's his face took, went on multiple dates. I don't remember any date this man took her to. Like that. So if he says no on decision that which gives me the vibe that he do based on the previews from the next two two episodes supposed to, to be coming out, talking about I made decision from the heart. I spoke from the heart. Well, your heart gonna tell you you're gonna miss out. Because you had a gym. And are we talking about the same man who who, who grow plants? Who made both eyes at the crib? That man. That man who who got ten thousand plus in college debt. Who got no money like that? That man. That man being matched with a realtor, who got mad because she said you buying me a house. He was like offended. Me buying you a house with what money? Bruh. Ain't no money. Bruh. I am broke. I have debt. I have student loan debt. What house? You mean this apartment? That I got all these plants? Ain't no babies anytime soon. These these are my kids. These plants are my kids. I water them because they're my kids. Okay? I took it to the plant shop because I got nothing better to do. I'm going to teach you about plants. I'm, I know nothing about romance. I threw whipped cream in your mouth to kiss you because I'm lame. I wrap around ropes around you to bring you close to me because I'm lame. Ain't no romance. You you like them ropes, Lubin. No, I'm I don't. If, if you need to grab me, Bring me closer to you. You don't need no extra loops, loop de loop to do that. Got me like doing a um, scavenger hunt for stuff in the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> this the same man? The washing machine man? Is this your king? Ropes in the washing machine. This is your king. It's I agree with you on the washing machine, though. I said, why'd you show her to the washing machine? I agree with you on that one. That was stupid. You can't take me to the H, but you want to take me to the washing machine? Make it make sense. He deserves a Jasmine, you know, real cool, down, down to earth chick, cause he ain't got no money for no Kirsten. Okay, she'll take whatever as long as you find me attractive. Did you see that that little clip of her going on a date and the man said she found her attractive and then she gonna kiss him like a true pick me? Come on. If you find her attractive, she gonna lay. She gonna take me. Take me, please. I want to be your girlfriend. Oh. You like me? You find me attractive? I am your girlfriend now. Take me on a date. Give me some cookies. Give me some penis. If you find me attractive, I will give you some coochie. 
As long as you find me attractive, I will be your girlfriend. Ha! Ha! Is this your king? Shaq Will. I don't know his last name, but Shaq Will, that's your king. He gonna regret this. I swear to God. If if next week comes on and he said no to Kirsten, because I could tell she... He, he probably said no because Kristen was drinking with Nicole saying, take a shot to the next life. It's giving single. It's giving, I'm out with, with, with my homegirls and we drinking it up because I'm newly divorced and I'm outside. That's what it's giving. That little clip where she outside with Nicole, it's giving, I'm outside because I'm divorced, I'm single, I'm ready to mingle. That's it. Whew. Listen, you unloaded a full clip. <laughs> I just wanted to point out, <clears throat> listen, you know, I, I don't know. Like, he didn't do a whole lot. I know JR was mentioning that, you know, he really liked her, but I didn't see a whole lot of effort on his end uh, at any point to really woo her. Um. I don't know if you remember, but the camera showed us some footage of him walking through the door, her asking him if he she he wants some dinner. He's mumbling at her, barely talking to her. Remember when he went on his little business trip? Brother is slamming down laptops when she's trying to blow him kisses. So, yeah, Sha Shaq has definitely got the petty bug. He's a little, you know, he hasn't, I don't think he's emotionally intelligent. I think he's a, he's great at his job and great at what he does, but he has to learn how to transfer some of the good skills that he has at work into relationships. And I'm not saying Kristen, she definitely has some work to, to do in relationships, better communicating, right? Letting her walls and her guards down. We saw that in her resistance to him meeting her family. Um, and how long it did take for her to do so. Um, so she's definitely got walls up. And I think that's work that she has to do for sure. Uh, if she wants to be in a serious relationship, you know, better at communicating, better at um, not jumping to conclusions and, and things like that. Uh, but this guy has not been Prince Charming. And, you know, did he get rejected in the beginning? But yeah, this is Married at First Sight. JR, we're not talking about you and me. We're not talking about the traditional dating process and leading up to marriage. This is a show where you meet the person for the first time. And, and there's been several, a couple that do not like each other or there's not attraction on one and on the other. And sometimes they grow from it. You know, listen, could she have done a better job and being less vocal, being more sensitive to his feelings? Of course, I'm not gonna argue that. But what I will say, it's a show and this is what happens. This is what happens when you throw two people together in a social experiment who've never laid eyes on each other. And if you wanna really be mad at anybody, don't be mad at Kirsten, be mad at the experts. She said she don't like bald dudes and they threw her up against with somebody that's bald. So look, what do you want her to do? I love you, it's great. No, she doesn't, she typically doesn't like bald guys. But guess what, she gave it a shot. And Eventually, he, and he, who cares, Jr. Like, what the hell is she supposed to no, a switch? Thirty. That's the whole point. Yeah, the point JR, is, is, like, when he was also, feeling, we, we we have to also be realistic, right? If you don't like women that are X, and then they give you exactly what you don't ask for, you're not gonna turn a corner in in thirty seconds, and all all of a sudden be like, woohoo! I love whatever is the exact opposite of what I asked for and what my type is. That is not normal. It's not normal for people to do that, right? It no, just, I, not, right. So this is the part that you can't say because she didn't like him that he's justified in acting the way he did. No, you as a man. And everybody else in a relationship is responsible for the way that you carry yourself. Now, if you are offended or dislike the fact that she does not, is not attracted, then you can make a choice to say, hey, listen, if you don't like me, if you don't, if I'm not your type, do, give me the cue up Fantasia. If you don't want me, then don't talk to me. 
right? We can all do that. But if you choose to stay in the process, you don't get to stay in the process and be petty and drive somebody nuts and, you know, continuously make them pay for what they said two weeks ago. You have to move on. Those things do not bode well in relationships. And that's what I mean. He has to learn how to fare through challenges in a relationship. Because if you keep holding on to the past, you're never going to move forward. I agree with you. But that even furthers my point. If there was a, such a hurdle to get over for the first 12 episodes out of goodness knows how many where we're at right now, then saying yes doesn't make sense to me because it took you so long to find that attraction. Then it took you so long to feel comfortable uh, inviting him around your family. He missed that barbecue. He wasn't there. And so long to, for him to meet the father. So I don't think they were working to the same time scales. He liked her initially. She wasn't feeling him. When she did start to feel him, he was already at the point where I'm getting the hint now. It, it, it's just not going to work. So when he started saying, you know what? If it stays like this by decision day, then I'm going to say no. That's what he said to her twice. That's what shifted her into gear and start to maybe analyze, wait, I'm in this process. And if I don't at least give it a try, then I'm going home without what I came here for. That's what spurred her into action. It wasn't this miraculous attraction that grew. He's the same guy that grows the plants, like Ludwin said. He's the same guy that has the corny jokes that she didn't like. She's the, He's the same guy that was mansplaining when he explains things. All of these things are the same dude. So on the one hand, you're saying the process is, you know, is, is too short for her to have invested so early and grown into attraction. But on the other hand, like he, sh he should continue to pursue her even when she's not feeling him. We all know that that's not going to work out well. At some point, you have to realize the relationship dynamic. Snap out that dream. Yes, you were. you thought she was fine as hell when you first saw her. You said she was everything that you were looking for. But when it wasn't being reciprocated in that way, it was like pulling teeth, trying to get to know her. And she started trying to make you change yourself to try and acquiesce to what she was looking for. Why say yes after all of that if he's not the guy that you want to be with? But like I said, she did win me over in the last two or three weeks. I like the interaction, the kissy huggy touchy stuff that they did briefly on this episode i just wanted to see more of that in order for me to be convinced that their relationship has more foundation and you bring That's up a good point, point jr because did you see and i wish kojo had clips <clears throat> because when she was they were laying in the bed talking she was expressing to him how much she's going to miss him and he was very nonchalant. And when she went to, when they went to hug by that door and his hand was like on the lower small of her back, barely touching her. And she's like got her arms wrapped around him when they were leaving the night before decision day. So she's just, then, then you know what? If she's that good of an actress, I need her to get it. Somebody needs to be watching. You know, and put her on a show because she's she's definitely good at that, you know, because and he was very lackluster. The hand was barely touching her lower back. She had all of that up against me. She would be pregnant at decision day. There would be no there was that's it. We're done. <laughs> no, we're right done, in, sure. Right in the hallway. <laughs> that's this I'm just not. I mean, I, I do hear what you're saying. I, I mean, listen, he could be a bit more... Listen, I think he's a bit awkward, 
personally. I think he is a bit awkward, right? Because the whole we had a whole joke about it, the whipped cream situation. Uh, you know, that was a bit mad. You know, he's just not a smooth operator, okay, when it comes to Kirsten. I think that's just in general. He's not a smooth operator, right? Uh and so I think that plays a part in their interaction. I think he maybe, maybe, you know, she doesn't make him feel all that comfortable, you know, and that's not necessarily to say that's her fault. It's more to say maybe he just doesn't feel as comfortable to uh, fully let all the, the you know, uh, to let all his inhibitions go with her, right? You know, um, so that that's also plays a part, right? And then I just think to myself, this whole conversation started with you telling me you ain't attracted to me. And then you barred me. Now let's not put, let's not forget. Cause this is where I can't forgive. You can't bar me in public in front of everybody saying, you know, I don't find you attractive and rub my head. Like I'm the genie in the bottle. You want to rub me the right way. No, you're not going to do that to me. Right. So at that point, I'm going to have problems. And then when you come and tell me that you have a problem with my humor, I'm telling you now, I wouldn't have made it eight weeks personally. I wouldn't have made it eight weeks. I'm going to get my check, though. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the eight weeks. I'm going to get my check. And I'm going to do the next two, three or four episodes they're telling me i got to do. And I'm going to do it. But I'm going to tell you no one decision there, personally. Right? I can't trust anything you say after. I don't care how touchy, how feely. I don't care if you put the pom-pom on me after. I will not trust a word you said to me after that because you've barred me in public. This is not something you said to me behind the scenes. It's, it's not behind, behind the scenes. You unprovoked told me. Because her thing was unprovoked. Because it was because of what Clint was said to, to Thingy that she came out and said, well, you know, I don't really find him attractive and rubbed his bald head in front of everybody. Like, am I, am I, am I a dickhead? Because clearly I'm a dickhead if you're doing that to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely a dickhead. And then you make a joke. Mm, I don't know, joke, not joke, what do you want to call it? About a 2.9 million pound house. Now I'm feeling like I'm going to be used. Because you know damn well, you know damn well the way you put that across what no oh you know like we we can do this so when you now turn when you change your tune like later on like oh no i, I meant as a joke i meant i meant us to do 2.9 million you know us to do, uh, to buy this house together of course i don't mean that you mean you need to get 2.9 million house but you were saying it seriously in the house to me so i'm suddenly meant to realize you're joking now so let's 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 not pretend as if we're going to suddenly be uh, believing her i don't care how thick her thighs are and how thick her buns are i'm not a dickhead for nobody i'm so sorry i don't care how fine you are it makes no difference to me because i need to trust you if i'm going to marry you and say yes and continue past the 8 weeks remember i'm also on a tv show so i'm now even thinking do you do you want me just for the tv show i'm now thinking you're just saying yes for this for the situation because it looks good on you for me personally I wouldn't have gone past eight weeks. There's nothing she could have done. After she rubbed my head and my bar led and said those things, embarrassed me in front of everybody, then did the, the house thing too. Bro, there ain't no comeback after that, right? And we are yet to see her come out and say, my, uh, to, to come and say something different. Has she, said she, has she said he's fine? I don't remember him saying he's fine. I don't remember her coming out saying he's he's a good looking. He's, well, I remember she said he's handsome. I remember her saying he's handsome, which is, which is, which is the code word for nigga, you ugly. But you handsome. We know that. What you you know you know. Don't, don't play with me. Don't play with me. You know, bro. No, no, you no, know. No, listen. Handsome. After you've called me ugly. After you after you said I'm not attracted to you. Handsome ugly is to handsome. not. Handsome is not a compliment. After you've gone from unattractive to handsome, it's not a compliment. Because I could have been handsome, and you might not have been attracted to me. You know that already, right? So if, if she said that from the beginning. Then I would understand what you're saying. But you go from unattractive to handsome, you know exactly what that means. You're still ugly, but to me, you look okay. Okay, you look to me, you know, I, I can I can work with it. Come on now, let's not lie. You know what Sean, I'm saying? So I hear it. When she oh, said oh, handsome, that was code for perfectly passable. That's what she was saying. She was not saying he's sexy. She, he went from um, I'm not attracted to him to he's handsome. That's he's perfectly passable. Exactly. And what physically changed about his appearance to make that transition from ugly to handsome? Nothing. It's the same brother. The and same he did not rub his head the, ball, the sexy way. I know how to rub a bald head and that was not it. So that's why the smoke's there. When you because are initially attracted to someone, that's when you're going to do that. She was not at first. But as all the ladies have told us, you know, hey, you guys can grow an attraction. So maybe as a man... It, it's not it probably ain't going to happen for me and we see that very clearly with aris right 
He d- he said he wasn't attractive from the beginning, and it stayed consistent through the end. He went through a whole lot of leaps and bounds, and nothing ever happened. It didn't change, and he made sure that his decision was what it was, right? For her, she changed, you know? And nobody says she has to find him to be the most endearing person in the world. She does not, you know? Look, when you're matched with somebody that you don't, you've never seen before, it's an untraditional process. So again, I'm not I'm not denying the fact that look, it's a it, it's a it's a tough spill to swallow for somebody to tell you that they're not attracted to you. But when you put yourself on a math show, Kojo, you got to be open to the process. You got to be open that that person that sits across from you might not find you attractive. It might be a journey. And some some people develop and evolve. How many, every one of these couples, somebody said they initially weren't attracted to the person. Hell, you know, Chris even got, got run up and done up because he said that uh, Nicole was thick. They moved on. She moved on. You know? He didn't, it's like he sometimes didn't we just gotta, we gotta build. He didn't, yeah, he didn't he see danced around he it. Said, he said, Whatever it was, type. there was some. Usual type is not something that's unattractive. Huh? Usual type. Well, usual, usual type is she's not the same as unattractive. Than, she's thicker than what I normally date. That doesn't mean you're unattractive. That it's for? Preference. That's cold for she's a bigger gal than I'm normally with, <laughs> which means that's not what he usually likes. But, but that doesn't mean it's a problem. Okay. That doesn't mean it's a problem with that doesn't attraction. Mean it's unattractive. Oh, yeah, that doesn't mean so that. This I means get preferential. That. You guys, you guys like can I like use big bum. Code. You can use code when it's convenient for you. And no. then when it's not, you can you now you want to be very you bro, might be very much into thing, semantics. Bro. So just let just let me know which one we going which one we gonna roll with. All I'm saying is, and I, I I'm not saying it's not a tough pill to swallow. I get it, but at some point we gotta build a bridge and we gotta get over it because if the girl is showing you two and three weeks later that she is making inroads to you know, make a way to get to know you better and to enjoy you. She's blowing you kisses over the phone. She's giving you hugs. She's giving you chances. She's opening up to you. She's sitting on his lap. When he's throwing temper tantrums and walking out the door, she's following up behind him. She is trying to do things that show that she wants to do the things that he wants her to do. So I just got to say, like, at a certain point, we got to realize, like, she made an effort. Was it enough? Doesn't look that way. What enough for Shaq? So, hey, I get it. But I think she should have said no. And I think he needs to say no because they don't really have a lot of chemistry. There's not a lot of chemistry. And and again, I'm going to go back to the suit. We can debate whether it's Gordon Garchell, Joker, or any other Marvel person that we want to make. But my point was not about the attractiveness of the suit, because I'm talking about all the colors. When somebody wears all those colors and you got half there, half that, that shows somebody that's a little indecisive. You got a lot going on. You got about five different colors going on in the color wheel. And that's that to me shows that he was all over the place and very conflicted. And we saw a lot of that show up in the relationship because we didn't see a whole lot of effort from him towards her either. Thank you, Sean. This kind of proves my reasoning. The same for asking the original question. Can anybody give me a tangible reason why she should say yes? Because it all seems performative to me for her saying yes you pretty much have agreed they both should say no for a myriad of reasons but she said yes why no one can still answer that question for me because we all think the same thing it should have been a no it should have been a no for the both of them because what you said weeks ago we keep going back and forth about this, but you said this weeks ago, and I agree with you. They have both done the bare minimum to one another when it comes to this relationship. Bare minimum. It hasn't been no extra for neither side. People answered your question in the chat. It says she likes marriage. She likes the idea of being married. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like. After a while of, okay, 
So we got this song um, in my culture called Abitudla, which means habits, right? Once you start to form a certain habit with certain people, you want to keep them around to keep the same habits going. Not necessarily like you, you you in love with them, but it's the idea of having somebody around. Because after what, like, how long it takes? 21 days to build a new habit. So it probably got to the point where she, like, she got used to the idea of being married. Because when they were out and they met all them guys, she was so off. She's like, I'm married. I got a husband. My husband this. My husband that. Even though he... he he ain't worth a damn, but my husband this, my husband that, you know? She probably liked the idea of being a wife, but she's the wife of the wrong person, right? So I could see that could be the reason that she said yes. However, it's a dumb reason to say yes. He ain't worth a damn for her in, in a long run. Because the same you. way these YouTube talking points be like, don't get with a woman with a master's degree. You need to get with somebody who ain't got nothing because they're thinking about all the debt the woman got that they don't want. And Shaq got a whole lot of debt that nobody should want. He can't afford nothing for the next 15 years. Honestly. He got to pay that masters off. But I, I don't want to go in on Shaq. I want to talk about the, um, the, the comment Kojo made about Calling a man handsome is equivalent to, to that man being ugly. I don't believe in that. If I call you handsome, I actually find you fine. That means you got the chisel, the, 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 the face, and you look fine. So I'm going to call you handsome because that's the right term to call a man that, that has that masculine face. You're like, damn, that man handsome. But if I say you are right, that means you ugly. It could be a Florida thing. If I say he all right, you know, he cool, he straight, you know, you know, he he cool. <laughs> that means I don't find I don't I might not sleep with you, but you still cool for a man. You know, you look like a man, so I'm gonna say you are right. But to call you handsome, I don't believe that's super equivalent to being ugly. I don't believe in that, Kojo. I, I, I rebuke that term. <laughs> okay? A lot of men are handsome because they actually are good looking. Okay? Yes. If now, you immediately see them. Agreed. We're talking about someone who didn't immediately see someone and said they're handsome. That was not her first instinct. If you say it first instinct what? to say somebody, oh, he's handsome. Yes, we'd agree with you and say, oh, okay, yeah, she she thinks he's handsome. She thinks he's good looking. But, oh, no, when she saw him, she rubbed up his head and said, hmm, hmm, hmm. yeah, I'm unattracted to you. So then to go to handsome after, I'm like, yeah, baby, we know what that means. Oh, no. So we're not, we're not talking about the very beginning. We're talking about like, when, you, when you start off that way. I, you know I, I, mean? I do. In I, this I, instance I, specifically I, is what Kojo meant. In the instance of Shaq and Kirsten, mm -hmm. I agree with you. There are men that are handsome. There are men that are fine. There are men that are okay. But they're but Kirsten saying that at that time, I was like, mm. to me, I said, oh, she's saying perfectly passable. She's like, oh, she's like, okay, I'll go with this. That's what she was saying. She wasn't saying yeah, it's like, So I think that's the caveat I, to all of it. No one believed it. Hold on, hold on. The hold moment on. she said it, wait, wait, we wait, didn't wait, believe wait. it. So I cannot be hot, coochie, attractive to you. However, you might still be a handsome man. Because she might not like bald men, but he's still a good looking man on his own merit, right? He's not ugly. He, he He's not deformed, you know? He ain't got no like, ugly nose you know he's still a good looking man however for me if you 28 29 years old and you're already bald head that's a problem <laughs> you way too young to be bald head you need to be at least 45 to be bald head like make it be like 33 can't lose it can't lose it out of here you wanted that to be on your team this is what you get Sean <laughs> Oh no! Uh -uh. You got sprayed up, bro. <laughs> 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 
Save your client, sir. Attorney Delane, save your client, sir. Your your client needs saving, bro. You put her on the stand. She's Man, out I here killing your defense. Good stray with Seaway. What happened? She's not even here today, and I caught a stray. What type of stress this man has to be under to be losing all his hair? I Look with oh. the student <laughs> debt, the student <laughs> debt, the studying. Get out of here. My boy stress. Okay, he, 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 he is stress with a K. You know what I'm saying? That man is 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 going through the listen, change. Ludwig, you said he ain't gonna be able to afford nothing for 15 years. Don't you think that's stress? <laughs> Ludwig, leave you, bald heads alone. Ludwig, I, I, I don't think you noticed you. You kind of insulting Shad over here. Shad's like, "Yo, I'm no, bald." No, <laughs> you spraying me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Shad's not yeah, twenty years old like Shaq is. You know what I'm saying? What you say he should be bald? Wait a bit. No. no. <laughs> You well, see, I'm that's saying. what I'm trying to say to you. The handsome don't mean well, jackal when people are saying stuff like this. It don't mean jackal when they say stuff like this. This is how they go and compliment you. Like, yeah, yeah, well, you know, you handsome, but you know what? Well, like, you, know, you don't, you don't. Know, you know, you know, you know, tell me you had the white bob and core, and I can just totally forgive you. Because you were celebrating for Haitian flag day. Because other than that, you now now you just age shamed me. You know, it's like I'm just getting gut punched. I don't. I, I'm just. I don't have nothing left. So I should be bald because you're saying I'm old as hell. No, like, no. What? what I'm trying to. What happened? Was, you see, it is. It, it's it's a normal progression to lose hair as you grow. Right. So if I do see someone in their late 40s, early 50s, if they, if they went bald head, then that's fine. Because I do see like receding. So I'm late 40s. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you should let your defense stuff. rest. What I'm saying is it's normal if I see average men in the late 40s to 50s getting, you know, going the bald way and then doing a nice little beard cut. You know, it's sexy. But to be 28 years old, 29 years old and already balding, what you got going on, fam? You ain't got no kids yet. You know what I'm So saying? how am I going to how am I going to believe you when you add then? Oh, but I think he's handsome. I'm going to call Cap on all the stuff he just told. Because the real truth is what you just said right there. That's what I'm trying to say to you. You and Kirsten are like this. You are like that. Because that's how she feels about bald heads. You know what I'm saying? So the reality is, if you now come and tell me I'm handsome, what you're really saying is, Negro, you ugly. You're passable. And I'm just, I'm, I can make do. You, ju I can just about make do. You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what Kirsten's saying. And that's what I'm trying to say to you. Like, As for me, I can't do it. Because I know it was Cap from the beginning. So I'm saying that, look. I'm not saying that women can't grow in their attractions. I'm with it. I think women can grow in their attractions, right? Um, I, I, but this is why this is this is why we're this generation at the moment, at this time and point in time. When you, once you get what you want, this is how we this, we we start having issues. Okay. Um, but no, in reality, with, with Kirsten, I mean, listen, I don't think she's actually necessarily a bad person. I'm just saying that from the very beginning, something the the way she had started off the whole piece was disrespectful. And the disrespect kind of continued in the course of the relationship. And I'm saying that if that is the case, how do you expect me to trust what you're saying? So when we were saying, obviously, flipping it to handsome, I'm like, well, if you call me that from the very beginning, like you said, two truths could be existing, right? So why don't she start off the conversation by saying he's handsome? Why don't she start the conversation about, hey, I don't like bald heads, but I still think he's handsome. Why was it the first thing her thing was not that he's got a bald head and y'all know I don't like bald heads and he's unattractive to me? Like so, so, so what? So what? So what do you want me to do about that? You know what I'm saying? So now you want me to believe that you you flipped it? No, because you could have still said handsome and 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 said that like, I got a bald head. I don't do bald heads. You want but you me didn't. to shame you, Kojo? You can shame me, but I'm saying I'm saying at the end of the day, that's what I'm saying to you. I personally, if you don't feel me from the beginning, it's okay. Don't feel me. It's okay. I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? You don't have to do too much. You know what I mean? Yeah, you don't have to do too much. This is, just don't like, don't don't force yourself to be in a situation you don't necessarily want to be in. And I think she was comfortable. I think the here's the reality. I think what happened, right? Here's the thing. 
Kirsten's a fine ass babe. She can get bare man all she wants, right? Reality is, I think she can get him. I can't. I think she doesn't keep him very well, right? This is one man that stuck around for eight weeks, all right, because of the because of the course, right? You get used to somebody being in their space. You're with them every single day. It does get like comfortable, and you almost you 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 start to get used to them until there's distance in a relationship. So when people start going to work and having to spend time away from you, suddenly that close knit that you have, cause you are spending every day together, it begins to grow apart because really and truly you don't really like the person the way you thought you did, right? But because you, had to, because you were forced to stay with that person for so long, you think you like them, right? I just just don't see it. I'll be honest with you. I'm not saying that she didn't get a little bit more closer to him, a bit more touchy feely. I saw that. I'm just saying that for me personally, after the disrespects, even if he did like me, it's a disrespect that's going to take me out. I, I can't, I can't do it. The disrespect, I can't do it personally. And I think there's more coming. Okay. I think there's more coming. Right. I think there's hidden things that curse is not telling us. That's why we had to wait so long to meet your dad. Your dad not coming on the camera has got no excuse as why I haven't met your dad so much, so early in the show. Your dad could have met me off camera like he did on later on the show. Something isn't quite right. Something isn't quite right in the milk. And no matter buttocks, no matter thighs, no matter how fine she is, no matter how much melanin she had, Carrie is going to step, make me look at her and go, let me just ignore the red flags that I saw. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying she's bad. I'm saying that just something isn't quite right. And for me, I got to bounce. But Camille, you had your mic open. And I know you want to say something. I know you've been waiting patiently. Jump in for us, sis. Not really. I was just um, <laughs> I was just listening to everybody's commentary. Um, <clears throat> I guess I disagree that she was disrespectful. I guess that's that's the part that I'm not getting. Um, I didn't see it as disrespect. I, I saw it as her attempting to be honest without being offensive, or as we saw a lot of contrast with other people expressing their level of unattraction and it was disrespectful. So I don't think, I didn't interpret her, her statements some of her statements as disrespect. I interpret it as her trying to be honest, not be a liar and not pretend while at the same time letting him know I'm still open, even though I'm not, necessarily initially drawn to you. I'm not going to lie to you and pretend, but I'm also letting you know I'm leaving the door open for something to grow between us. So I didn't see her comments in, in the beginning as disrespect. Um, I do agree with Lou. I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, but I agree with her um, when she was saying that there's a level of comfort that's been established there because there's not a lot of depth between them. And I think because neither one of them know how to really go deep emotionally, there's a level of comfort she's willing to accept um, to have the stability of being married and having the ring. And I don't think it's because her feelings are disingenuous. I think it's because she hasn't been able to dive deeper into her, her true feelings. Um, because what I see is is really Shaquille wanting like a beautiful emotional support animal. You know, um, everything's been about his needs from the very beginning. He hasn't really expressed how he wants to serve the marriage. He never expressed how he really wanted to serve his wife. It's, it's always been about the support he needs, how he needs to somebody to come and watch him do his job so he can feel a value um, in the relationship. It's been about how Kirsten responds and her, you know him manipulating every single aspect of her a response to some of his requests. Um, I've never, for the length of the season, heard him really try to delve into what she needs. And then when he asked, he was very impatient and dismissive. And I just, I never saw him as, um, and I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I just never saw him as husband material. And I think for Kirsten, because she hasn't delved deeper into her emotional spaces, she doesn't realize that a lot of her, or she doesn't trust her initial unattraction is really based on energy and it 
bald head, I mean, you can say you have a, to me, bald head is a preference. It doesn't make a man ugly if he has a bald head and I don't like bald heads or I don't go for bald heads. It doesn't turn his face into a dragon's face. You know, it's just like he doesn't have, he doesn't have dreads. Maybe I like dreads and he has a bald head. That doesn't make him ugly. But I think she distrusts her, her, her own intuitive responses. And I think her intuition energetically was telling her certain things about Shaquille from the very beginning that she continued to try to override. And now that she's overrode all of those things and come to the end, she's now in this place where she's willing to go along, to get along, get along, go along. And um, I, I just see Shaq being very emotionally unstable as as Sean was talking about being represented by the suit. He's he talked about the depression. He talked about the kind of emo he he hinted out those things, the emotional back and forth. And I can really see where that is 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 almost like draining. And I can see I can even see it in Kirsten's face. Like she was like, I saw how it affected him. And I was deeply, you know, I didn't want to let him down. And it's become all about him and his emotional needs. I really feel like it's more than what's being shown on the show behind the scenes. If we could really get more behind the scenes, I could really see how some of his emotional moods are very draining and very almost like a succubus, an energetic succubus. When somebody is like emotional and stable and they need so much emotionally and so much support and so much of this you don't have any space to open up. It doesn't make you feel safe to open up. I think she noted that from the very beginning, because look at the wedding, look at their wedding. Even though she wasn't initially attracted to him, they had a different vibe. It was a, it was a different vibe. She was a lot more open, but I think as she spent more time with him, her intuition was telling her emotionally, this is not a space for me to open up. It's not a space for me to do that. And she actually did what she was supposed to do, which was stay back, reserve her energy, play her part, um, and see where this guy was going. And I think because she wound up overriding and being pushed into, you know, push past your non-attraction, push past this, you know, she, she wound up overriding her intuition and coming into the space where now she's being energetically sucked in by someone who is not in a place to actually emotionally support her at all, at all. So. I think that's some great points, Camille. Just going to say, I, I think that's some great points. Where's, the, where's your sound effect, coach? That deserves, <laughs> emotional succubus deserves a sound effect. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's elite, that's elite top tier. That's a breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I I uh, love cool. that. Um, I also agree. Uh, he is definitely emotionally stunted. I think that you know, talking about the car accident, and I think that him, you know, as a child, he probably did not get uh, like the things that he needed and that attention and uh, that affection that he needed. I totally agree with you on that. I actually have a question for you. What do you think of of Kirsten then? Looking at the um, do you think that she has a um, emotional uh, awareness. I'm asking you, Camille. I'm asking because Camille's new, and you know, <laughs> what do you think about um K about Kirsten? I think, um, I think she lives on the surface of a lot of things. I think she lives on the surface. Um, it's not that I don't think she has the capability of going deeper. It's not that. It would definitely take a totally different person to help facilitate her going deeper. But I do feel like she stays on the surface of things because that's how she's lived her life. I think that's what's pushed her forward is not having to go deeper. I think she did. Um, I think because people judge pretty people a certain way. They um, they also don't encourage you to go deeper because they've already judged you based on your external experience or your ex your external appearance, and they um, 
they almost project onto you. So, you know, they don't see you as having endured or gone through a lot of things that, or even deeper things that people that they don't interpret as beautiful have gone through. And so they leave you, they let you be on the surface because they're really objectifying you based on how you look. So I feel like she's been objectified a lot based on her thighs and her butt, her, you know, and her face and her looks and the way she carries herself. And she hasn't really had probably the space to be able to go deeper. And so she's relied a lot on just staying on the surface of things, not only to be successful at what she does, but also to navigate relationships. I think she's been seen in a way that maybe her value hasn't been magnified beyond her her looks or beyond what men think of her when they first see her. I was so she's safe being there. And um, I think with even with Shaq, I think she wanted to open up a little bit. I remember they had this little spa day and a lot of people interpret it as her as like being really close. But when a person is, is like that, you really have to allow a lot more space and, and create this atmosphere where they feel comfortable going deeper. And I feel like because Shaq saw her, I'm attracted to you. I see what I want. I want you to open up right now. And she didn't in the way that he wanted her to. And he became very impatient with her. And I feel like then she kind of, it kind of put them back at square one. Every time they were kind of making progress, the way I saw Shaq responding because of the emotional space he's in, he didn't leave that open for her at all. So, yeah. Um, I think I think Kirsten is actually a really, I think she's a really sweet person. I think she's a very caring person. Now, how this played out on the show will be different because we see, you know, all these relationship matters being compressed within the eight week time period. But I actually think with therapy, um, there's a lot more to her and a lot more that she'll be able to to offer just from as from her standpoint as a woman standing within herself. Um, people expect her to go serve like Shaq wanted her to just go serve, go do this. But I think if she gets to the place where she's able to um, really connect with the deeper parts of herself, she's going to be able to offer um, just by her presence so much more than Shaq was trying to get from her, which was running around to different cities and watching him do things. Um, but he's just, he's not in that space to be able, even from the masculine point, to be able to receive that. So they don't need to be together, but I think this was a good learning experience. Honestly, I think it'll probably benefit her more than it'll benefit him. I don't think he's really at the place yet where it's going to benefit him maybe down the line. But I think for her, if they walk away from this experience, they don't, they're not together. I think it's going to give her a little bit more time to reflect. Thank you again, Camille. I loved your uh, your breakdown. I just want to say, um, I think you kind of proved that point. The girl's not ready for the marriage, and that's the point we're trying to make. Thank you. Oh, that's the point we're trying to make. She's not ready. She's not ready. And 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 I'll just say this as well to add. I, I did a video on this, and I did back your point on this on the spa situation. I saw him do all those things. By the way, what, what I'm saying doesn't mean that Shaq is off the hook. <clears throat> Shaq's got big problems. You know, I think he's far too firm, far too much in his emotions. You know, he's somebody who's going to be emotionally reactive. He's not going to be a safe space for Kirsten. They're, they're both and what we call antithesis of each other, right? They are the opposites of each other. That's why they put them together. You know, the experiment was to try and hopefully they would open each other up. The problem is it usually doesn't work that way, right? But the, the reality is, the reality is no amount, and that's what I said about the, the Kirsten situation, it's really interesting because when men are like this, we say that we don't want women to be the to be the incubator for that man. 
And I would agree. I don't want no man also being an incubator for Kirsten because what Kirsten needs is a, is a therapist. What she needs is me to sit on the screen with her for the next two, three hours and be like, so Kirsten, you've gone through a lot. So what's happening? And then I'm going to be silent for the next five minutes and she's going to go, hmm. Okay, so after five minutes, Negro, we ain't got the time. Like, I'm I, if I'm a therapist, I'm a coach, I can do that. But if I'm your partner, I can't do that. You know what I mean? So, I, I, you know, oh, my laptop's gonna go off. Yeah, um, go ahead. Uh, and Trey's got a point too. Trey's yeah. got a statement. I was gonna say, I actually agree with you, um, Camille, that she's not. Um, she takes a long time to get to to get to that space where where she can open up, and you have to let her um, have that space. I think even Kojo said a couple of weeks in that he kind of stepped in, and she was trying to answer the question, but it took her so long to get to that that it seemed like he was stepping on her words, and she um, that and he interrupted her, and she needs time to marinate to answer the question. So yeah, I I agree with you. Um, and I also agree that the point about her being so pretty, a lot of times um, she's never been able to add to the conversation because people just think, oh, well, she's so pretty that she doesn't have to and she can just be pretty and she can just I, I absolutely agree with that, that she's um, never been allowed that time to to add to the conversation and add to that, you know, show her intelligence or show a different side of herself. So she's kind of leaned into that other side of her. So I agree with you on that. But because of that, this was a totally wrong matchup for them too. And um, and they're in totally two totally different spaces. I, I forgot the other, my other point, but I've talked enough. Go ahead. Trey. Oh, I mean, I was gonna make a statement, but Kocha was kind of getting to my point. I was gonna ask, like, can we just agree that at times Shaq did show himself to be an emotional leech. And there were times where Kirsten showed herself to, to be an emotional brick. And those two canceled each other out. That was so, my point. Yes, absolutely. I agree. All this back and forth, you know, it, it, it really got to the point we was trying to, people felt like we was giving smoke to one, smoke to the other. I'm like, no, they just, they canceled each other out to what Sean was saying weeks ago. They both was given the bare minimum. You know, we're just going over finding points of who more wrong or right really didn't matter. They both just canceled each other out. The only thing that confused me out of this whole situation was when we saw this episode last night and she said, he yes. Said yes, exactly. Why? Where did that come from? I still ain't got the answer. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> it don't make sense. Everything that we have said tonight only leads to my further point. It should have never been a yes. For so, in my mind, for you to say yes, um, it, it, it only it only pushes the idea. Of, you know what? You've just been performative this whole time because it's been obvious that you cared about how you looked on camera. I saw that from the get go, but like Coach was getting to, Shaq ain't off the hook either. Like he's not a safe space for anybody. You know he is emotional draining. He drained us for some weeks. Like, dude, dude, what's going on with you? Like, chill out. You know what I'm saying? He was and all these temper tantrums. Like, bro, just chill out. You know, but it doesn't help. When, like you said, you're trying to pull from an emotional brick, it's frustrating. And he's a leech. And that's even worse. So it's like, cancel out. You know, just, just, just throw it all away. But the funny thing is, we saw this from episode one when they met, they got together. So all this flip flop, oh, she wasn't, because she wasn't into him. He was, we knew he was. She wasn't into him. Weeks later, it's a flip. And we all know what the flip was. The moment they, they, they it was in what week four, and they asked him the question, and he straight up said, 
no. If things continue like it is, it'll be a straight up no. All of a sudden, Kirsten turned it on. She's open now. Performative. It's performative. I appreciate it. I saw more of her because I'm be honest, I actually kind of like Kirsten. But I'm going to call out the fakeness. No. No. Shaq, I can't call him fake. He's just been ugh since day one. Like, nah, there's problems there. Ugh, since day one. He's been glaring. We saw what his issue was going to be when he came in here. And it just got worse and worse over the week because he's been rude to her. There's been times where I thought he was rude to her. No good. Like I said, they just keep bumping up against each other. So to me, it just cancels out. The only thing that confused me when she said yes, that that threw me for a loop. I, that, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. It's just giving, oh yeah, we on TV. I need to look good. Mm. You know. But that was it. So, I agree. Because if he is as draining emotionally as everybody's analysis is is suggesting if he hasn't been giving her anything, he hasn't been kind to her or said anything nice to her, right? She didn't mention any of those things on decision day, right? She could have said a lot more if she really felt like that, but she didn't. So I think that if she is saying yes, it may not be for the for the reasons that will probably result in a successful outcome long term. Now, I will say, I agree. Kirsten seems like a very sweet, very nice person. She's she doesn't strike me as malicious, cold, calculating, vengeful crazy toxic none of those things can be said about her from what we've seen that's gina sorry that's gina exactly but i would say kirsten is sweet to the point where she may be a little aloof or not as self-aware right so when she does make these statements about her preferences everybody has preferences that's fine but when you vocalize that to the point where you're emphasizing how much of a disappointment it is to see somebody that has what you're not looking for, then that's what seems fishy to me. It's like, okay, so, he, you know, he still has he still has the same things that you found a problem with. Okay, you grew to like other areas, but there are also many other areas along the journey that you didn't like, sense of humor, the plants, etc. We spoke about it extensively. So I agree. The, the thing that confused me about that, because I, I thought she would have said no. But the fact that she said yes, now I'm thinking, goodness, like what Shaq, what, what's Shaq going to do? I'm really curious because if he says yes, I think, you know, judging by the last few weeks, it might be worth a try. If he says no, after building up, to you know the way he was speaking before the show ended i was like he's actually gonna say yes like he he actually is gonna say yes and you know i've been saying about this couple it just seems like attraction was the bugaboo for them and then it just spiraled into a few other things but i haven't seen um enough for me to say you know, I'm fully convinced by by them staying together. I haven't seen that at all. I just want to go back to real quick what Camille was saying about um, Kirsten. I, I noticed it from the beginning when we went to their different apartments. There's nothing on the walls. There's nothing to show her personality. I feel like for years, Kirsten has not had to, you know, be herself or nobody's given her the space to show who she is. And then she lands herself in this relationship where a guy wants her to be emotional and, um, and be that uh, emotion, um, 
be my emotional pillow and, and wants her to do all of these things. And she's like, I don't even know who I am yet. You understand what I'm saying? So I feel like she doesn't know who she is. And now she's in a relationship where this, she, this man wants her to, to, Oh, see what I'm about and come to my, come to my, uh, my work and like be my, that, that, that sugar baby on my arm and do all of these things. And she's like, that's not, I, I can't even figure out who I am yet. So you want me to do the, um, be that person for you. And that's really hard for her. I think that, um, she needs to really, yeah, we've talked about therapy, but you could tell, and we talk about, oh yeah, that closet, but just the, uh, that house really shows a lot about who she is or who she isn't yet. And, and you re land in a, a relationship of this guy that wants you to do all of these things and be all of this, be this person. And I don't think that she knows who she is yet. And she's never had the space to speak up and find, figure that out. Or um, she's landed on pretty and may not have been, may not have been on her, um, of her own making, you know, she got her real estate license, done her, her own thing, but but people have kind of objectified her for years. So she's landed in that. That's it. Any other additions, guys? Any other additions? Don't worry. I know some people asked me if I was smoking uh, uh, our brother uh, Shaq. Don't worry. I'll get him in my personal review like I did just today when I released a video. But um, yeah, no. I think I think you know as I've spoken about cursing quite a bit, you know I do understand where you know the pushback is for the Shack situation as well. So it's not like I don't see; it. I do see it. Um, and I'm not saying actually I'm not saying cursing is even worse than Shack. To be honest, um, I think we're I think Trey and Sean have kind of brought it to that perspective where it's I think it's about even drawing from both sides. You know how this has uh, unfortunately. Uh, gone the way it's gone, you know. Um, but I think there's some lessons for all of us to to kind of learn. Um, hold your tongue. Don't. Say, it's not everything you have to say that you feel. You know what I mean. Sometimes hold it back. You, know, you wait for the right time. You know, because some things when it's said it can't be undone, can't be taken back, um, can't be unheard, can't be unseen. You know. Um, you know as well. So um, I think I think from both ends, there's there's things that can be learned. You know, chat can learn how to to be a better with emotional regulation i think that's why he needed so much from her i said that already before i think he's a bit wounded um we haven't really even addressed the fact that there's no father figure there and how that's impacted him you know what i mean like uh, that's why he wanted to meet her dad so much because he wanted a father figure from her side right so that's also an aspect that's going to play into relationship how does he interpret being a man and 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 that role as well you know that's also an aspect as well because the reason why she triggered also too is because like he doesn't carry the traditional masculine presence um all the time as well right so that doesn't mean he can't be emotional that doesn't mean we've said it me and sean said it several times does not mean he can't cry it doesn't mean those things at all what it does mean is how do you show up um and actually kirsten actually kind of gave him a blueprint um which he couldn't follow the blueprint was very simple carry some motherfucking boxes into the house carry the shopping into the house take the bin out the, take the bin outside it's the very traditional aspects that she needed from him um and that's not to say they didn't do any of those but it's to say that those are the kind of things she's requesting from you that are gonna make her feel some type of way okay all right and next time you spray whipped cream in someone's mouth and force it down her throat okay be gentle you know have a bit of suave about you you know, Brother Trey gave us the sound effect last night. He says, skr, skr, skr. you know, you were moving like, you know, it was, uh, you know, the radio, there was, there was radio interference. You know what I mean? Like, we, we need a little bit of you to work on that. Aspect there. You know what I'm saying? He was, you know, so that's, Shaq does need to work on those things. And, you know, uh, he, he is a, a very emotional, I don't want to say emotional because I think that's the wrong word, but he's somebody who's, uh, presents, uh, emotional on sleeve and that's 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 a problem you know um because that doesn't make her feel safe so he has to find a way of also being able to contain um and present himself in a more masculine presence as well with that and i do think there are wounds there so there's going to be more requests of her to be um implementing 
the the emotional needs from him from for his side as well right while she's starving on her side as well so you know that's why i said i wanted the experts to be involved this could have been saved i can't lie to you this could actually have been saved it could have it could have been saved right if the experts got involved they could have pointed out these f f things instead of asking whether you think he's masculine and then not doing anything with it like you know what i mean it kind of yeah exploded on them but Hey, Sha, we have reached our three hours and gone past the, the minute. What do you want to say, Shawnee? Because you know, he's, he's, you, you get to say anyway, because you're the, you're, the, you're the deacon anyway. You get to have the last word. So <laughs> you can combine it in your in your benediction, sir. No, just a lot. Because I mean, there might be something that you can add to that, because I don't okay. think it could be saved. Because I think just as though yeah. there's still something that, like, he would have to be something other than he is. I think, Okay. you know. I think they they were they exhibit a couple that kind of work through their challenges to a certain extent. But I think for them to have long term success, it could have been saved for them to both be at a resounding yes at decision day. I agree. Right. Because maybe he could have taken some of the feedback and made some changes. But I think long term, he is who he is and he might need to find a more masculine woman mm. that likes him and doesn't have a problem you know like just a non-traditional modern woman that is not into the gender roles doesn't really you know doesn't really care about you know how you present or not and you know is cool with that and if you love her she loves you and as long as you guys can work together on a partnership you know maybe like a gabrielle union type just you know in that not like Gabrielle Union, but a type that just leads more like she's a leader in their household. So if he found a woman who could lead like that, but is willing to entertain all his needs, then that could work. Now, what does she need to change? Because we heard what he needs to change. Oh, she needs to be more open. She needs to also you know, because just like we said, she she should have said no. Um, and I think like she just needs to rely more on her intuition. I think that she has some deep seated daddy issues that she masks by elevating her dad to a point where, from what we've seen, no disrespect to her father, I don't think he should have been elevated because he didn't really show up for her in the way that she needed him to show up. And I think Kirsten is somebody that, you know, has been disappointed so many times instead of being embarrassed, you know, publicly, she'll say it's OK and she'll make excuses. And I think she's also done some of those same things for Shaq. Right. Which is why she accepts the things that he did eventually. But she had those doubts, but didn't trust her gut. Right. And that's because I don't she's never really had the full support of her of her dad. So I think she does need to heal from that and just be honest, right? And it's not like you got to beat your dad up or bash him, but just be honest about the situation and understand the impact that it's had on you and how to make better and do better in terms of choices. You know, I still find it, well, to your point, Sean, I don't think we touched on that enough, but I think I tried to touch on it. I, I still find it very odd. She's been very stamped to me. She's still, but even though she looks like she's trying to be open, it still came off as very standoffish towards Jack until she until he she finally took him to meet his father. It seemed like it went well. The father seemed to like him. Talking about, hey, he told me to come back over for beers and stuff. Now all of a sudden, that's when I noticed her gun ho on it. That's when the true openness came up. I'm like, this is then what was what was the big issue of holding off for him to beat him? Like Kojo said earlier, you could do this weeks ago. Weeks ago. What was the hold up? Like something is just off. This has always been a little off with Kirsty to me. And in the way she moves and how she does things, it's just been off. You know, but they both got issues, so it's just it's a toss up. You know, it, it's just it just so happened these two people with their particular personalities put together 
and it showed deficiencies in each other for all of us to see. That's really what has happened here. Because on the surface, they're both decent people. We, we're not saying they're horrible, or bad, or anything. They're not. But how their personalities are, you put them together, it just made them bump heads and we start seeing certain things, you know, certain sides of you are going to come out when you're around certain people. That's just life for all of us. You know, a person might come across and rub Sean the wrong way. We see a whole nother side of Sean we ain't never seen before. Like, whoa, I ain't, I ain't never knew Sean was like that. Well, a person came through and you know, it affected them and now we see another side of Sean. It, it can happen to any of us. We just happen to see it live with them. Like, okay, yeah, this is not good. This is this is just not gonna work. You know. Yet it seems like they're trying to fit a, a round a square peg into a round hole on this. That's that's why right. it's just confusing to me. I don't understand why she said yes. It's just, it just don't make sense. But who knows? We'll see what happens. All right, <clears throat> Sean, do what you do best, B. Oh, you got it. So listen, folks, we're almost at the home stretch, you know, um, and uh, we are back at this, but we appreciate you hanging in here. And we are three couples down. So we got three couples down, you know, um, Aris and Jasmine, that we are free of them and they are free of us and they are free of each other. So hopefully they will go their separate ways. Jasmine can ride off in her 740 and go find somebody that wants her because unfortunately, uh, you know, Aris ain't it. And I really don't think these two should even be friends. I think, you know, this is a this is to me, I see this as I don't want to see them no more. Just go off and, you know, go find your person. And this is another clear example. Age is just a number. You know, our girl Aaliyah told us age is just a number. Um, uh, and I think sometimes age doesn't mean maturity. Age doesn't mean being relationship ready. So make sure that you inspect, make sure that you vet, make sure that you, um, are with somebody that has relationship maturity, emotional intelligence, um, and care. And, you know, for the ladies, please don't be so open and willing and accepting of just any old thing that a man may give you. Uh, because that can be to your demise, because we can smell it. So, you know, thankfully, Aris didn't, you know, take her all the way out. We appreciate him for that. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, Jasmine, too, needs to, to have some work to do. Uh, Chris and Nicole, we knew these two were going to say yes. Now, are they going to make it? I don't know. You know, I wish them well. They've said yes. Now they're together forever. But decisions need to be made. Where are we going to reside? How are we going to live our lives out together? Those are big concerns. And I think Nicole was right to want those questions answered. So hopefully we get some answers. Are they going to cohabitate? If they're not cohabitating, the clock's ticking. Clinton, Gina, uh, biggest disappoint disappointment of the season. And it looks like they're going to be tussling over 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 the dog. They're going to be tussling over the dog, good people. So let's see what happens because it looks like Clint's like, I want Hank because I've been taking care of Hank for these eight weeks. And now me and Hank had a bond. I mean, listen, Hank was following Clint right to the door. <laughs> so we talk about animals and some like animals and some don't. But animals have a keen sensibilities. And I think Gina, unfortunately, missed the mark, you know, uh, those, you know, most of us here on this, this good channel and um, watchers are believers. And our good Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was dismissed because he came riding in on a donkey. Please don't miss your don't miss your blessing because it didn't come just the way you think it should come. Sometimes your blessing comes the way that it should come. So that's my lesson when it comes to Clinton. Gina, Shaq and Kirsten, I think we have bit we have beaten the horse to its end. So, you know, I'm going to wish them well. Let's wait to see what Shaq says next week. Hopefully it's a no so we can be free of them and free of the debate. Back to you, coach. 
Listen, we've been back with a bang. Uh, what the boys and the ladies, uh, the, the men and the women, I should even say, um, together uh, for another uh, enthralling conversation. Listen, TV One has brought out uh, The One. So <laughs> that's my next show to review, okay? Kurt Franklin brought a new date in the show. We gonna review it. I think it played on tonight, 9 p.m. So I'm gonna try and watch it tomorrow um, and do a review for you guys as well. So maybe we can even do some stuff on on a Saturday um, or a Sunday and do some some panels on that. But yeah, listen, thank you guys for joining. I hope you had some fun. Ludwin came in with the assist and the dunk. Uh, we had Camille also come in with some great insight as well. Shout out to Crystal as well, holding it down as always. Uh, JR and Trey, thank you for uh, triple teaming Sean to make sure he knows that you know what, Kirsten, no matter how much bunda she has, all right? It don't matter. We're not blind. Okay. Uh, so I appreciate you, but I appreciate Sean even the more for coming through, uh, Sean and, uh, uh, holding it down as always. Deacon is, is always, uh, requested and his, uh, you know, his, uh, his end sermons are a powerful thing. So, uh, audience, thank you for joining us. We'll be back again, I believe, uh, sometime. I think no, Sunday am I here? Yes, yeah, Sunday. I think I'm here. I should be back in time uh, from London. So, yeah, I'll be back Sunday. And he's got his men's panel back on now. So we're going to be back in there. All systems are going to be go again. So, listen, audience, we uh, appreciate you. Stay locked, stay loaded. And uh, we'll see you again very, very soon. And uh, don't do anything I wouldn't do, baby. Okay? We appreciate you. Stay locked, stay loaded.